Welcome to the Bakersfield City Council meeting. This television broadcast is brought to you by the local cable companies, the County of Kern and the City of Bakersfield. You can watch the rebroadcast of this meeting Saturday at 7 p.m., Sunday at 10 a.m., and the following Wednesday at 7 p.m. You can download the agenda for this meeting at www.bakersfieldcity.us. Presiding over this evening's meeting, the Honorable Mayor Karen K. Go. Good evening. It's my pleasure to call to order the 515 regular City Council meeting of March 16th, 2022. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mayor Go. Here. Vice Mayor Weir. Here. Councilmember Arias. Here. Councilmember Gonzalez. Here. Councilmember Smith. I am here. Councilmember Freeman. Here. Councilmember Gray. Here. And Councilmember Parlier. Here. Thank you. Tonight we have the pleasure of having Dr. Antonio M. Alfred, who's the pastor of St. John Missionary Baptist Church, offer the invocation. Their church is extremely active. They're on Brundage Lane and just very, very supportive of our community. We appreciate that so much. And then following the invocation, Sanjina Mazar, who is a junior at Stockdale High School, will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. She is a youth commissioner, Council Member Smith. She's your uh, Ward 4 appointee, 4.0 GPA. Uh, she's a, she plays violin with the Bakersfield Symphony Orchestra, Stockdale High School Varsity Tennis, National Honor Society, Toastmaster, student mentor. And if that is not enough, she is the founder of Music for Healing, a nonprofit where she plays the violin for residents at nursing homes. So we are so privileged to have you here and congratulations on your accomplishments. Would you all please stand? Let us bow. Our Father, we come before you today to give you honor. You are worthy of all of our praise. You are the source of all that is good. You are the giver of all of our blessings. We thank you for everything that we have been given. We thank you for the opportunity to come and gather together this day. We ask for your hand of blessing on this meeting. We ask that you would guide and direct this meeting so that it would be full of wisdom, productivity, and respect for one another. We ask that you help us to accomplish the work of caring for our community this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Sanjina. Thank you, Pastor Alfred. You may be seated. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. We really appreciate that you're engaging in the civic process. I see, I know we have a student from Bakersfield College. Would you raise your hand? Thank you for joining us. And if there are any other students, uh, welcome. Here are a few guidelines to help our meeting run smoothly. We request that you turn off your phones. Please be courteous in the use of cameras and videos, and for safety reasons, and as a courtesy to others, no signs are allowed in the council chamber or in the lobby. Applause is allowed during the presentations portion of the meeting, but not during other portions of the meeting. I know you're going to feel very passionate about what you're talking about, but we'll just ask that you uh, be respectful, just as Pastor Alfred prayed. Everyone in attendance is expected to adhere to the rules of decorum established by resolution of the city council. Failure to abide by the city's rules of decorum, including any disruptive behavior that interferes with our ability to have an orderly and efficient meeting, prevents the city council from conducting the business of the city. Please consider this a first warning to everyone in attendance that conduct that disrupts the meeting may result in expulsion and or the chamber being cleared. Disruptive behavior includes repetitive statements, going off topic, shouting, 
outbursts from the audience and surpassing the two minute time limit. Madam Clerk, next item please. Presentations item 4A, proclamation to Mark Wyatt, principal of Kern High School District's Bakersfield Adult School, declaring Adult Education Week in Bakersfield during the week of March 28, 2022. Good evening, colleagues. It's always a pleasure for me to go to the adult school where you see adult learners who are so eager to learn. Unlike some of the younger students, these adults really have a passion. And thank you so much, uh, Mr. Wyatt, Principal Wyatt, for all that you do to serve our community. So it's my honor to read this proclamation. Whereas the state of California will observe Adult Education Week March 28th through April 1st, 2022, and whereas the Kern High School District acknowledges that the Bakersfield Adult School continue to serve adult learners in the most difficult time in its over 100-year educational history, changing economic and cultural needs of a vigorous, expanding community, and whereas Bakersfield Adult School relentlessly prepares thousands of students to meet their academic, personal, and professional goals by enrolling in one or more of the diploma or GED programs, and whereas Bakersfield Adult School provides for the unique needs of individuals in a diverse population and offers family literacy instruction for parents. Now, therefore, I, Karen Cago, Mayor of the City of Bakersfield, do hereby proclaim March 28th through April 2nd, 2022, as Adult Education Week in our city, and salute the administration, teachers, and students of Bakersfield Adult School, and honor each of them for their efforts and accomplishments. It's, it's dated this day, March 16th, in Bakersfield, California. It's my honor to present this to Mark Wyatt. Mark, thank you so much. Thank you, Mayor Go. I couldn't have said it any better. Bakersfield Adult School has been educating this community for over 100 years. The last two years have been very difficult at Bakersfield Adult School, but our students and staff always look forward to the future. That's what Bakersfield Adult School is all about. And the future is very bright at Bakersfield Adult School. We've gone through a real reboot over the last two years. We've got a lot of great programs that we're kind of reintroducing to the community and we expect big things and hopefully we have another 100 years in Bakersfield. Thank you so much, Council. And Mayor Go is an incredible supporter of adult school. So proud and so honored that you're uh, handing me this proclamation tonight. Thank you so much. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Presentations item 4B, proclamation to Jeffrey Gutierrez, president of DeWalt Corporation, declaring National Surveyors Week in Bakersfield during the week of March 21st, 2022. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Since the colonial days of the United States, surveyors have been leaders in our community, shaping cultural standards. And I don't know whether you know some of our surveyors, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, William Clark, among many others. And you might even be surprised among your colleagues. So it's my honor to be able to present this proclamation. Whereas surveyors play an integral role in land development from planning to designing of a building site, and whereas there are over 45,000 professional surveyors in the United States, approximately 4,000 in the state of California, and 13 registered in the city of Bakersfield, Whereas surveying has been an essential element in the development of the human environment since the beginning of recorded history and is required in the planning and execution of nearly every form of construction, and whereas many services are now provided through the use of sophisticated surveying equipment and techniques, including satellite-borne, remote sensing devices, and automated positioning, measuring, recording, and plotting equipment.
Now, therefore, I, Karen Go, Mayor of the City of Bakersfield, do hereby proclaim March 21st through 27th, 2022, as National Surveyors Week in our city and call on all citizens to recognize and commend surveyors for distributing and contributing to the construction and advancement of our community. It's dated this day, March 16th in the city of Bakersfield. And so it is my honor now to be able to present this to Jeff Gutierrez from DeWalt Corporation. But before you get to talk, I'm gonna call on a surveyor. If somebody up there on the dais is a surveyor, I'd like that person to speak. Council member Bob Smith. Thank you, Mayor. I have been a licensed land surveyor for 40 years and uh, if not for surveyors, sewer would go uphill and property would be on top of each other and things would not be where they're supposed to be. So I appreciate your work. Thank you. Mr. Gutierrez. Mayor Go, uh, council members, uh, on behalf of Kern County's uh, surveyors, I humbly and graciously accept this honor. I brought a couple of them with me. I brought uh, Ron Nelms with me, a former president of the state uh, California Land Surveyors Association, and I brought Christy Shea with me as well. Uh, she's uh, an officer in our local chapter of the uh, California's Land Surveyors Association. Um, you kind of stole my thunder there when you were naming all of the uh, famous surveyors. I was hoping you were going to throw uh, Robert Earl Smith into the mix, but uh, again, uh, thank you for the uh, for the proclamation. Thank you. In keeping with council's resolution, the public statements portion is now divided into two periods. There's a period for items listed on the meeting agenda and items not on the meeting agenda. Statements for items listed on tonight's agenda are given a two minute time limit, 20 minutes total per agenda item. The consent calendar as a whole constitutes one agenda item. Statements regarding items not listed on the agenda are given a two minute time limit, 20 minutes total. If you have written comments that are longer than your verbal statement, please give them to the clerk who will give copies to the council. If you're here to make a public statement, please fill out a public speaker card and give it to the city clerk. We ask that you mark whether you are here to speak on an item listed on tonight's agenda or in a matter not on the agenda. Speakers who do not identify the agenda item on which, which they wish to speak will be presumed speakers for the non-agenda portion. Those speakers will be called during the non-agenda portion of the meeting. If you are here on public hearing item 9A, now is not the time to speak. You'll be given an opportunity to speak when that item is called later in the meeting. Hearing item 9A, that's the fifth public hearing regarding redistricting ward boundaries, will be heard at 6 o'clock pursuant to California Elections Code Section 21628C. When you fill out your speaker card for the public hearing, please include which map you are here to speak on behalf, and whether you are in opposition or in favor. 
we're very interested and concerned with your issues however due to the public notice requirement of the brown act the council cannot take action when an item isn't on the agenda the council can however refer your matter to committee or request that staff contact you madam clerk do we have any public speakers regarding items listed on tonight's agenda mayor go we have received one speaker card regarding items on tonight's agenda. And would you go ahead and please call the speaker. Lori Passante, who will be giving general comments on item 9A, um, not in reference to the hearing itself, but regarding redistricting and the Fair Maps Act. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor Go, Council, Lori Passante for the Lawyers Huerta Foundation. Ms. Passante, would you just hold for one minute sure. and please stop the clock? We have some guests who need to find seats. So if you have a place next to you, can you just indicate where that is? Yes, go ahead and sit in the front row. And staff, if you have any seats over there, please also welcome our guests. Do we have a few here on the left also on that side? And just while everyone's sitting down, a reminder during the meeting that uh, we can't have standing in the aisles or in the back just because of fire regulations. And so we want to make sure you're all safe. Thank you all for uh, moving into your seats so quickly. And now, Ms. Pizzante. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. It's clearly a really wonderful opportunity to hear from Bakersfield tonight. And so I wanted to bring to the council and the community's attention that this right here is a screenshot of a redistricting ethics training in Menlo Park that occurred in this cycle. And guess what it says? Avoid these headlines. Don't be like the city of Bakersfield related to open meetings laws. So as we have our comment tonight, I would really appreciate it if it is necessary to extend comment time that that be granted at the mayor's discretion. I came to speak specifically about the Fair Maps Act. And indeed, I requested at the last hearing a partisan analysis to be completed of the maps because of the source of maps 2C, 2B, 2A, and an original map 2. This request was ignored, so we contracted for the partisan analysis to be done ourselves. And indeed, Mr. Weir, who has uh, um, identified himself in the Bakersfield, Californian as a point of contact for these maps, chair of the Republican Party. Indeed, that map, it draws Ward 1 boundaries such that it packs in as many Democrats as humanly possible geographically and overpopulates it so that there are as many in those boundaries as humanly possible. This map has been referred to as the Republican map or the Abernathy map, referring to Kathy Abernathy and her uh, Republican consulting firm, Western Pacific Research. And indeed, um, a case that just came out of San Luis Obispo, the court made it very clear that once a board is presented with this evidence of the possibility of discriminatory impact, you must consider it. I ask this council to consider this information as evidence of the prohibition against partisan advantage maps under the California Fair Maps Act. And I'm handing the re results to your clerk now. Thank you, Ms. Pizzante. Madam Clerk, uh, is that the only speaker on the agenda items? Yes, Mayor Go. Thank you. Do we have any public speakers regarding items not on the agenda? We have received three public speaker cards regarding items that are not on today's agenda. Thank you. And I'm going to ask uh, everyone who's standing to please find a seat. We'll just wait until that happens. If you have a seat, an open seat, would you just raise your hand, please? 
can somebody, can one of our staff help our guests find a seat, please? Okay, and while they're uh, making their way down, go ahead and call the first public speaker and the second. The first public speaker is Janae Hansen. The second is Brooks Douglas. Welcome, please introduce yourself. My name is Janae Hansen. I'm here today because I have concerns about the animal situation in Bakersfield and the disregard many people have towards their pets. Many people mistreat and dispose of animals like they are nothing and something needs to be done to show people that this behavior won't be accepted and to keep animals out of the hands of people like that. Recently, there was a woman caught on video kicking her small dog, Lucky, multiple times, including one kick to the face. This ended up all over social media and the news, and the media did inform the public that the woman, Amal Hanna, got arrested. But since that, no one has been able to get any info on the whereabouts of Lucky or if there is a court date for Amal. I personally found out that Lucky was still in the home with Amal, and to me, it seems like Amal is getting off with just a slap on the wrist. Myself and many other community members have questions about this issue, and no one can figure out who we are supposed to go to for those answers. BPD, Animal Control, and the DA's office have been contacted, and we have been either ignored or told the information can't be given out, but the public has the right to know. Who was why was Lucky not removed from an abusive home? Who checked out Lucky and said he had no injuries? Was it an actual vet? Were x-rays done to check for internal injuries? And is Amal Hanna going to court for her crime? California law states that abusing an animal is a crime and kicking a small defenseless dog eight times is abuse. If people in cases like this are given hardly any consequences, then the situation in Bakersfield is never going to change. We will continue to have full shelters, loose animals all over the streets, and precious animals being mistreated. And our animals deserve better. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Hansen. Councilmember Parlier. Thank you, Mayor. Staff can reach out to this person and see if we can um, help, you know, shepherd some of her questions and help them get answered. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is Brooks Douglas. And following that, it's Joy Kennedy. Welcome. Please introduce yourself. You might raise the mic a little, please. <laughs> thank you. I'm Brooks Douglas. I am chairperson of Keep Bakersfield Beautiful. Um, thank you, Mayor and City Council, for letting me speak today. Um, each April, as many of you know, is Earth Month, and Keep Bakersfield Beautiful Every year has been asking for volunteers and sponsors for Keep Beggarsville Beautiful for our annual Great American Cleanup. Uh, this year, I stand before you with thousands of volunteers celebrating our 20th year anniversary of Keep Beggarsville Beautiful. Uh, we're going to be having a luncheon to celebrate this event on April 6th over at Mechanics Bank Theater. And we'd like you to join us. Uh, we will be honoring several of our volunteers, sponsors, community uh, partners at this luncheon. And we will celebrate the story how a shy young man named Harvey Hall, <laughs> the, the city of Bakersfield and thousands of volunteers, including Mayor Goh, and many past and current council members, banded together with Keep Bakersfield Beautiful to make a difference. The public and you, city council, um, are invited to buy tickets for this great event, uh, sponsor great, our great uh, luncheon here on April 6th um, by visiting keepbakersfieldbeautiful.us. So keepbakersfieldbeautiful.us. So number one, please commit to a sponsorship of Keep Bakersfield Beautiful. Every dollar counts. We really appreciate every dollar. Uh, buy your tickets um, for that April 6th event, which is our 20th anniversary luncheon over at Mechanics Bank you know, at the theater um, by visiting that same website. And then lastly, register to volunteer to the public as well as um, yourselves for the Great American Cleanup, which is on April 30th. 
Uh, thank you, Councilman Smith, for um, appointing me to the Keep Bakersfield Beautiful Board. Uh, thank you, Mayor Goh, uh, City Council, Council members, and the many divisions inside the City of Bakersfield, including the City Attorney's Office, the City, Mayor, um, the city Manager's Office, and Solid Waste. Our you, uh, sponsors Mr. passed in, oh, are we done? Sorry. Thank, thank you, you, Mr. Douglas. We so appreciate your service. You've been a tremendous leader. And um, we look forward to all of you council members joining in on the Great American Cleanup. We also have the Mayor's High School Challenge, encouraging high schoolers to bring as many people. The school that wins will get $500 of my own money. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Douglas. Thank you. And then let's, uh, we still have some guests who need places to sit. Would you just raise your hand if you have an empty seat? And then staff, whoever's managing the back, if we have no more seats, uh, can you just help them feel comfortable in the lobby, please? Um, there, there's, uh, there are two seats right over here, so can we get somebody to help facilitate them? Thank you, Mario. Uh, yes, if we can have somebody from city staff just help them find a seat, that would be wonderful. And please just make sure that we have enough of seats before people enter. Are there any more empty seats? Please raise your hand. Okay, there's one right there. Thank you very much. Raise your hand, please, if there is a seat next to you. There's a seat up here in the second row. One more up here in the second row. We can have one more person come in, please. And Greg, how many seats do we have in that row? Empty. There are three seats right here. Three more seats. And then staff, would you just keep the door closed until the speaker finishes, and then we'll see whether there are any more vacant seats. Madam Clerk, uh, right after we have this seating, would you go ahead and just announce, go ahead and announce the next two speakers. The next two speakers are Joy Kennedy, followed by Dennis Fox. Thank you, and Mario, if you can just help back there and uh, hold people until uh, Ms. Kennedy finishes. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, uh, can you move the mic closer to yourself, please? Thank you. Okay. My name is Joy Kennedy. I am not from Bakersfield City. I am from Arvin, outside of Arvin. So I am a county resident. I came here to back up Janae regarding the little Yorkie situation. Uh, this, I wasn't actually planning to speak, but this is an item near and dear to my heart. I do rescue. I have rescued animals out of the fields and the trees and everything for years in Arvin. I have taken them in, burned, cut, disfigured, you name it, I've seen it. Um, my problem is that I feel there is not enough enforcement of animal rights and animal laws in this county, in this city, and as evidenced by all of the animals that are in the street getting run over, the shelters are full, it's just crazy. Uh, years ago, I used to rescue out of the shelter and transport animals to other cities. This was really, really difficult, but I did it. And I was privy to hearing from people that rescue all over the United States. Kern County and Bakersfield are known as anti-animal places. Even as far, New York City said, oh, you're from Bakersfield? 
you're that pl- you're from that place it's so awful and you can imagine how that made me feel when i feel like we're trying our hardest but it's not good enough so i think that we need more education uh spaying and neutering we need this little dog out of that house the lady has three children and if she treats the little dog the way she did in public it makes me wonder how the dog and her children might be being treated in private I don't know the lady, don't have any idea, anything about her, but this is a, a big concern and it should be a concern for the city. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kennedy. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Um, Council Member Parlier. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, city Attorney, this was over my committee uh, a while back, just talking about animals and different uh, city legislation. Uh, can staff reach out to this person too and, and city attorney, maybe we can take a look at some different ordinances. If they have some ideas, then maybe we can come back and do a referral to Legend Lit. Sure, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Parlier. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Dennis Fox. Welcome, please introduce yourself. Members of the council, I am Dennis Fox. Mr. Fox, can you get a little closer to the mic, please? Pardon? Can you speak a little louder, get closer to the mic? Yeah, Thank how's you. that? That's good. Thank you. Good. Maybe it's not, it's not earth shattering, but I noticed that you're going uh, with the problem with uh, not enough ammo for the cops. So there's a half a million spending and there might be possibilities. Just keep your options open. For two things have arisen. People say we gotta get rid of guns, that hasn't worked. So then they say we'll get rid of the ammo. All of that coupled with the COVID thing and stuff, it's the price is artificially raised and there are other options that are coming in from either foreign countries available or you have them reload your old ammo for practice. So their options might save you a couple bucks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Madam Clerk, do we have any other speakers? Mariko, that was our final speaker. Thank you. Next item, please. One appointment at large to the Board of Directors of the North of the River Recreation and Park District due to term expiration of James Neighbors. Term expired December 31st, 2021. One application for appointment has been received from incumbent James Neighbors. Thank you. Vice Mayor, please. I make a motion to reappoint James Neighbor. You have a motion, please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. Next item, please. Consent calendar items 7A through 7AJ for approval. Two um, staff memorandums have been provided. One for item 7A, transmitting corrected minutes for the February 23rd meetings. And another one um, was provided for item 7B, transmitting minutes for the March 2nd regular meetings for your approval. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. I will make a motion to approve items 7A through 7AI. Council Member Parlier has requested 7AJ uh, be pulled for separate consideration and as amended by our city clerk. Thank you. You have a motion. Please catch your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. And now, Council Member Parlier. Thank you, Mayor. Talking to staff on this project, it sounds like it still might need a little bit more um, 
information and work on it. So I'm going to refer it back to staff, and I make a motion on the same. Thank you. Thank you. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. And our next item has to start right at 6 o'clock, so we just have a few minutes. But I think it would be helpful, because we have such a large crowd, large crowd here, not to move around. Uh, would you raise your hand if there's an empty seat next to you, please? And for staff, if you could just hold the people until we get anybody seated who um, is already inside. Please raise your hand if there's a seat behind uh, next to you. There's one right here next to Pastor Alfred. And there's one over there on, the, on that side. And staff, if you would just uh, not let anyone else in until we determine that we have some empty seats, that would be helpful. Would you raise your hand if there's an empty seat next to you, please? Uh, since we have a little bit of time here, uh, this would be a good time to have our interpreters explain how the uh, evening might proceed and if we have any equipment needs. So interpreters, would you please come up here and go ahead and explain uh, the equipment, please. Good evening to everybody. Tonight we will have both Spanish and Punjabi interpretation occurring during the meeting. This will be simultaneous. So if you do need interpretation, we will have devices available. We'll have them on and ready to go. All you have to do is put the earpiece over your ear and you'll be able to listen. Um, and in a moment, um, uh, Paramjit will repeat in Punjabi. Um, Para los que estamos aquí esta noche, esta noche sí vamos a tener interpretación simultánea a través de la siguiente sección de la reunión sobre redistribución. Uh, tienen unos aparatos con ustedes, si gustan oprimir el botón de, del centro para encenderlos y en un momento uh, yo voy a encender mi, mi dispositivo para comenzar a interpretar. Si alguien necesita interpretación en español, si pueden levantar la mano para identificar y poder pasar, uh, que no tienen un diapositivo. ¿Alguien más necesita? Ok. Um, así es que los pueden encender, pueden irlo colocando en su oído. Para aumentar el volumen es el botón de arriba. Así es que la parte superior de arriba hasta que llega a 9 y ya está bien el volumen. So when you get the devices, if you do decide to get interpretation, uh, you will just, uh, it will be ready to go, it will be on when you receive it. If you want to adjust the volume, you're just going to press the top part of the device and it will adjust the volume. Uh, Paramjit? Uh, Please use the microphone. Satsri Kalji, I have come to the Thaadde Liddu Pashiya da kam karnli panchiya. So, Saadde Kol Kushk devices ne jadiyan ke asi thonu dee saak deya, jay kise kisam di thonu Punjabi de vich load ha, koi vhi cheez no explanation li, ta asi thonu devices jadiyan ho provide kar saak deya, dee saak deya. So, devices no to see on kar sak deya, je fair vi thon no quick interruption ya kete koi bada mel diya ta to see sa no hath khada karke ya device land li to see hath khada kar sak deya ki thon no isse me load hai gi ya ya nahi. Hanji hon to see hath khada kar sak deya je kise no vi os device di load ha jide rai to see Punjabi de vich angreji da anwaad sunna chaone ya ta to see hath khada kar sak deya. Okay. And if you would just stay up here for a minute, just a reminder to all of you, since we have so many speakers, it will be helpful if you will raise the mic and speak right into the microphone and speak slowly enough so our interpreters can interpret. Would you please interpret that into each of the languages, please? Thank you. 
cuando tengan la oportunidad de hablar, especialmente para nuestros uh, miembros de la comunidad, queremos asegurar capturar su mensaje en su totalidad. Así es que si vienen y hacen un comentario público, uh, tómense el tiempo, digan unas dos, tres frases a la vez. De esa manera nosotros podemos interpretar y asegurar capturar todo. Uh, tómense su tiempo. Uh, de esta, sé que tenemos un tiempo limitado en el micrófono, pero si uh, es... Uh, Claro y conciso podemos nosotros interpretar. Ustedes van a tener el doble de tiempo ya que están hablando, en, estamos interpretando en dos lenguajes, así es que no comemos a su tiempo de, de los tres minutos, así es que uh, solo pedimos que nos den ese espacio para ustedes hablar, unas dos, tres frases, interpretamos y continúan con su comentario. Um, so for, I'm going to say it in English. And, so for all of our speakers, um, If you can say, if you are going to be requiring interpretation, we just ask that you maybe speak two or three phrases at a time, pause, give the interpreter the opportunity to interpret, continue with your comment. This will not eat away at your time of speaking. You will still have your allotted time. Uh, it's just the interpreter will have the opportunity to also make sure that your message is conveyed uh, precise and clear. ਬੋਲਣ ਵਾਲੇ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਸਾਡੀ ਬੇਨਤੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੋ ਤਿੰਨ ਲਾਈਨਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਇੱਕ ਵਾਰ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਪਾਜ਼ ਦੇਣਾ ਥੋੜਾ ਜਿਹਾ ਰੁਕਣਾ ਤਾਂ ਕਿ ਸਾਡੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਇੰਟਰਪ੍ਰੀਟਰ ਆ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਚੰਗੀ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਜਨਤਾ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹਦੀ ਪੰਜਾਬੀ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਨੁਵਾਦ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਸੁਣਵਾ ਸਕਣ ਇਸ ਤਰੀਕੇ ਨਾਲ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਕੋਈ ਵੀ ਸਮਾਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਕੱਟਿਆ ਜਾਊਗਾ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਸਮਾਂ ਉਨਾ ਹੀ ਰਹੂਗਾ ਜਿੰਨਾ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਗਿਆ ਆ ਸੋ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕਰਿਓ ਕਿ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਸਾਰੀ ਇਨਫੋਰਮੇਸ਼ਨ ਆ ਉਹ ਬਹੁਤ ਹੀ ਕਲੀਅਰ ਵੇ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਤੱਕ ਤੱਕ ਪਹੁੰਚਾ ਸਕੀਏ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਜੀ Thank you very much. Uh, they will be interpreting while while I give the direction. So it's going to be simultaneous interpretation. It is now six o'clock and our next item is public hearings, which involves redistricting for the new ward boundary lines in the city of Bakersfield. Based upon council direction, city staff will present two draft maps. Speakers, speakers will be allowed 30 minutes to speak on each map. Each side will have 15 minutes to speak in opposition and in favor. Each speaker will be allowed two minutes to give their statement. The time to speak will be doubled up to four minutes for monolingual speakers that need translation. It's important that you identify yourself, make your statement succinctly so others may speak. We'll hear statements from those opposed to map 2C first. Then we'll hear from those who would like to speak in favor of map 2C. If there's testimony on both sides, Each side will be allowed a five-minute rebuttal. We'll hear statements from those opposed. Then we'll hear statements from those opposed to Map 5B. Likewise, we'll hear from those who would like to speak in favor of Map 5B. If there's testimony on both sides, each side will be allowed a five-minute rebuttal. There's a clock on the TV screens behind me, which indicates 15 minutes. Please step to the microphone, identify yourself. When there is one minute left in this section, a yellow light will come on. At the end of this section, a red light will flash, indicating your time is up, and quickly end your statements. You may ask questions during your statement, but they won't be addressed until the public hearing is closed. If you have written comments that are longer than your verbal statement, please give them to the clerk and she'll provide copies to the council. Please be courteous to others who wish to speak. And before we begin, we are gonna need all of our council members present, so I'm just gonna wait a minute. Are there any other council members who are gonna need to leave shortly? Madam Clerk, you can go ahead and just read the first public hearing item. Public hearing item 9A, 6 p.m., pursuant to California Elections Code, section 21628C. Fifth public hearing, 
regarding the first reading of ordinances amending chapter 1.12, revising the boundaries of city council wards one through seven, both map 2C and map B5, 5B, apologies. Staff recommends council move forward with first reading of ward boundary ordinances for both ward maps 2C and 5B. Madam Clerk, there's a little bit more. If only one ordinance map proceeds for first reading on March 16th, a special meeting before March 30th may be set to have first reading of the ordinance map that was not advanced. This will allow both ordinances maps to be set for second reading on April 6th for one clear, consistent council vote and to ensure that council has options in order to meet the state deadline. Thank you very much. And I see we have a few people standing. Uh, we'll need you to take a seat, please. Raise your hand if there's an empty seat. And then for those of you uh, who are staff members by the door, it would be really helpful if you just keep the doors closed until we have a break. Mayor Go. Staff has received a memorandum trans or provided a memorandum transmitting additional correspondence and the PowerPoint for a uh, presentation for tonight's um, hearing. An additional staff memorandum was provided transmitting a corrected version of map B or 5B, whereby the city's consultant inadvertently split a community of interest, the Bakersfield Auto Mall, when incorporating the changes made by city council at the March 2nd, 2022 council meeting. The corrected map incorporates the unpopulated commercial area from Ward 6 and Ward 1 into Ward 7 with the rest of the auto mall and therefore addresses the consultant Scrivener's error. This area is bordered to the south by Pacheco Road, the east by Highway 99, the north by White Lane, and on the west by Acres Road. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, and colleagues, just a reminder tonight, if any of you at any point need to take a little break, just give me the signal during the hearing and we'll all need to stop at that point. But feel free to let me know. City Manager Clegg. Mayor and Council, good evening for this hearing because we've had multiple hearings leading up to this. Brianna Carrier, our assistant to the city manager, will provide a brief summary of our process to date and the two maps that are in front of us before we hear public testimony. Great, thank you, good evening. All right, so this is public hearing number five for the city of Bakersfield's word redistricting process. We'll have at least one more. We'll have one more public hearing on April 6th to finalize the second reading. Tonight is the first reading of two potential draft maps. The agenda for tonight, we will be reviewing traditional redistricting principles as we have, have done in the past, but we do have a captive audience tonight, so we'll want to review some of those core principles to redistricting and also seeing draft maps 2C and 5B taking public testimony in our public hearing format and of course, council comment and direction. So going over some of these traditional redistricting principles, uh, this is something we have reviewed throughout the process. We'll do again tonight. Some of the main things that we look for when we are trying to make sure that our wards are equal in population and in representation, making sure that they are relatively equal in size, that's people, not citizens, that they are contiguous, so districts should not hop or jump, that they maintain communities of interest, that they follow city and census designated place boundaries, and that they keep wards compact, both in appearance and in function. New to this cycle, uh, the 2020 census was the addition of the Fair Maps Act in 2019 and the conversation around communities of interest. So communities of interest are the building blocks of districts. A community of interest includes ethnic and language minorities and other groups. They are subjective, open-ended, and are meant to be as inclusive as possible. Communities that are covered by the Voting Rights Act include Latinos, Asians, and African Americans. Brianna, well, I apologize if yes. we may, and, and Mayor and Council, just a, a point of interest. 
we need a moment for technology for our translation to connect before we proceed. Okay, thank you. And uh, we have a gentleman in the back. Is there a seat open? There's a seat right over here in the back row. And And thank you, staff, for helping facilitate out there. I know it's uh, difficult with a lot of people uh, standing in the lobby. And I just want to confirm uh, that those who are standing in the lobby are able to hear. Can we get a confirmation from um, staff that that is the case? OK, thank you. Good evening again. Apologize that we are having some technical difficulties, but we are going to ask, uh, I believe it's because of some of the interference in our equipment, that if you are using the Spanish language interpretation, we're going to ask that you move to the lobby so that our interpreter is able to interpret for you. Parece ser que estamos teniendo un poco de interferencia ya que estamos usando dos diapositivos muy similares en el mismo salón y están interfiriendo con el canal de Punjabi y se oye muy bajito. Um, me están pidiendo que si gusto moverme al lobby para interpretar, que allí podré interpretar en español. Um, si gustan seguirme y uh, podemos interpretar. Um, voy a ir hacia el lobby. Staff, we now have a few open seats. If you would like to invite the corresponding number of people in, please. And if the rest of you would please sit down or your seat might be taken once we have additional people join us. Mr. Clegg, are we still waiting on? Thank you, Mayor and Council. We're actually gonna have our guests receiving Spanish translation move to our caucus room, which is just next door to the lobby so that they can be accommodated for seating during this time. We may have to allow additional time for those who are making public comment to make their way over here when their name is called, but we'll take a, we'll take a couple more minutes to get those uh, arrangements made. Ms. Carrier, would you communicate to the Spanish language interpreter, since she's in a different room, mm -hmm. to let people know how to make a public comment if they wish interpretation? They'll be over there, and we'll let the uh, Punjabi language say it right here in the chamber. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> 
Yes, Madam Mayor, thank you. And for our Spanish language interpreter, Reina, we do still have the opportunity towards the end of my staff presentation for anybody who needs Spanish language interpretation to make a public comment. So we'll make sure that everybody who is using the Spanish service is settled down in a separate room where they can be seated for the duration of the hearing item. And I will actually go and make sure that they're settled. And I will come back here and make sure that we restart the presentation so everybody gets all the information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for your patience. And now might be a good time to check that your cell phones are off, please. And while we're waiting for that confirmation, I just wanted to actually offer to the audience and those who have their phones with them that all of the city's redistricting information is on the city website. So if at any time something is a little hard to see or you might have missed something, all of that information is on our website. You'll be able to zoom into street level views as well. While we are waiting for that confirmation, is our Punjabi interpreter in here? Would you come to the front one more time while we're waiting and just give instructions to, uh, instructions for anyone who needs to have translation while they're making a public comment and what the procedure is? Let's go ahead and explain uh, if they need to have a translator while they're offering public comments, how to do that. So public comments, which you can see, you can see that 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 you can Thank you. Yes. Are there any other empty seats? Would you just raise your hand if there's an empty seat beside you? Anthony, there's one up here. Thank you, Madam City Attorney. Uh, Ms. Carrier, would you go ahead and start? Okay. Start from the beginning, please. Great. Great. Well, good evening again, everybody. Do apologize for some of the hiccups here, but glad that we are all still here together and we will always find a way to make these items go forward. Um, actually, the people in the back have the snacks now, so 
they, uh, <laughs> they, they're the lucky ones, truly. So again, wanted to start over. My name is Brianna Carrier. I'm an assistant to the city manager. I work in the city manager's office, and I've been coordinating the city's ward redistricting process this year. So we're going to start once more, and also just a remind reminder for myself and also for any other public speakers to make sure that we're speaking slowly and clearly for our interpreters as well. So we will get started again. Starting once more with our agenda, this is the items that we will be covering tonight. We will be going over traditional redistricting principles, our draft map 2C, draft map 5B. We'll have public testimony following staff presentation, and then time for council comment and direction at the end. Our traditional redistricting principles, these are the principles that we are keeping in mind when deciding representation amongst our city wards. The wards must be relatively equal in size for people, not citizens. Contiguous districts should not hop or jump. They must maintain communities of interest. They must follow city and census designated place boundaries. And we must keep the wards compact, both in appearance and in function. Communities of interest was a new uh, guideline that all jurisdictions needed to follow in California following the Fair Maps Act of 2019. So communities of interest are the building blocks of our districts. A community of interest includes ethnic and language minorities and other groups. They are subjective and they are meant to be as open-ended and inclusive as possible. Communities that are covered by the Voting Rights Act include Latinos, Asians, and African Americans. While communities of interest may include race, it cannot be the predominant factor in drawing district boundaries. What is not a community of interest? The Fair Maps Act explicitly prohibits these groups from being considered as communities of interest. That includes political party affiliation, incumbents, and political candidates. It is also hard in redistricting to truly utilize groups of similarly minded people who do not share a similar geographic location or are citywide. This table here is a table of the city's process as a whole. Now where we are is this green row, that's Wednesday, March 16th, our fifth public hearing and the first reading of our ordinance. Prior to this fifth public hearing, the city held our first public hearing in August of 2021, last summer. In the fall, we had redistricting partners come on board to do the demographic data analysis piece for the city. In December, we had a staff-led online workshop. Following in, one, or following in January was the first time that we had our draft maps, starting with uh, draft map A. We had additional draft maps uh, drawn following that meeting, a staff-led workshop in February, a dedicated redistricting public hearing being the third public hearing, Wednesday, February 23rd. We scheduled an additional public hearing March 2nd. The row that says March 9th here is actually a date that was important as a reminder for us that all maps that are going to go to a council vote needed to be posted seven days prior. So for us, that was March 9th. The maps that are before you tonight were posted last Wednesday, March 9th, absent some corrections that needed to be made. Two more rows beyond this green one where we are here tonight include the next meeting, Wednesday, April 6th, also scheduled for 6 o'clock p.m., and that would be the sixth public hearing and the final adoption, a second reading of ordinances. The last row here says Sunday, April 17th, 2022. Now that here is just a technicality. The city has technically until the 17th. However, that is not a date that we are able to aim for at this time. That is just the legal date that we must have our maps adopted by. A quick summary of the two maps that are before you tonight. We have draft map 2C. This was a public submission and it was forwarded with council revision. Those revisions include moving the area bound by South or bound by Stein Road, Ming Avenue, Ash Road, and Stockdale Highway into Ward 6. Draft map 5B, also a public submission, but with council revisions. Those revisions include moving the boundary line along the river towards the western part of town between wards four and five, and to move the square that comes south from ward three to ward two, 
up and make the square part of Ward 2. So those revisions were made, and those are the maps that are before you tonight. So this map is the current city ward map compared to draft plan 2C. One more time. And draft plan 2C. I would like to note at least for these two publicly submitted maps that they are also both within a legal deviation under 10%. For plan 2C, their deviation between the highest populated ward and lowest populated is 8.2%. For 5B, it is 9.1%. This would be the new Ward 1. Ward 2. Ward 3. Ward 4. Ward 5, Ward 6, and Ward 7. Again, this information is also available on the city's website. These are the first two links on the website if you are interested in zeroing in or zooming in on some of our tables that we have here. So that is draft plan 2C. We'll move now to draft plan 5B. Once again, these are the existing wards. This is draft plan 5B. Once more. Okay. So we'll move into each individual ward. This would be ward 1, ward 2. Ward 3, Ward 4, Ward 5, Ward 6, and finally Ward 7. Just towards the end of the presentation here, I wanted to give one last summary slide where you can see the differences between the two proposed maps. So once more, this is draft plan 2C, draft plan 5B, and a very quick snapshot of both draft maps uh, side by side. And another reminder that all of the information is on the city's website. Uh, this is underneath the city clerk's webpage. So if you go to the city clerk, you will find ward redistricting and you can find the same information. We're moving lastly to staff recommendation before we uh, move to the public hearing portion. Staff recommends council move forward with first reading of ward boundary ordinances for both ward maps 2C and 5B. And so that concludes my presentation. Unless there's any other comments from staff or city manager, um, prior to starting the public hearing, we did want to give an opportunity for our interpreters to just give instruction to those who may need interpreting services for their public comment. Thank you, Ms. Carrier. And at this time, I will open the public hearing. Madam Clerk, do we have any speaker cards? Mayor Go, we have received 30 speaker cards for this item. Thank you. Councilmember Gonzalez? Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, now is the time for those who wish to speak in the opposition of map 2C. So Madam Clerk, just to expedite this, if you can just call the first speaker and then say the second one after that so that that person can be prepared. And just a reminder to everyone, two minutes, please, and just watch the time. Madam Clerk, please call the first speaker. And this is opposition of MAP 2C. Mayor Go, we have 10 speakers in opposition to MAP 2C. The first speaker, 
Rapsi Bajwa, second speaker, Harveen Kaur. And just a reminder, just move the mic to your level so that we can hear you. Hello, respected city council and mayor. My name is Rupsi Bajwa. I teach ninth grade and ELD at Ridgeview High School. I'm also a proud graduate of Ridgeview High School. I made an important decision to stay in this community that raised me so I could support and pour love into my students who feel at home both at Ridgeview and surrounding areas. This is the reason we are against 2C. Map 2C divides our proud Punjabi community because I wanted to care, sorry, I stayed to teach in this community because I wanted to carry on that feeling of belonging and community with generations to come. Students share their frustrations, ambitions, and inspirations with me every day. So many students share how I'm the first teacher they've ever had the looks that, that looks like them, sorry, whose name <clears throat> sounds like them from their schools to their walkable places of worship. The youth and generations to come deserve the wholesome feeling of community. I hope you'll keep communities in their natural form and vote for map 5B, not 2C. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Harveen Kaur, followed by Manpreet Kaur. Welcome. Hi. Vaiguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaiguru Ji Ki Fateh. Good evening, members of the council and my beloved Sangeet and community members. My name is Harveen Kaur, and I'm a lifelong East Side resident of Bakersfield. Specifically, I must share my reasons against Map 2C. As a Ward 1 resident, Map 5B keeps the population variance balanced, diverse, and in addition, keeps the more of the area east of the 99 included. Contrary to the 99, or contrary to the map 2C, which has a lack of population variance. In fact, 2C seems to artificially pack communities into Ward 1 and inflate the numbers. Although the east side has always been my home, my heart lies elsewhere in Bakersfield as well. I was born at Mercy Southwest Hospital to my loving parents, Bob and Vicki, and from the moment I was born, I was surrounded by community. Friends and family flooded the hospital room after my birth to visit. And can you all guess where they took me first after I was born? It was not home, but a gordwara, one of the local gordwaras, a sick place of worship on the southwest side of town. Naturally, after spending countless Sundays at our gordwaras, I, <laughs> the southwest side of town, became home as well. A place where I can knock on any Punjabi's door and uh, always be offered a cup of cha or tea without even personally knowing them. Strangers who feel like family, as you can all see um, in the lobby, so feel free to grab that cup too. Um, as you look around the room today, my heart, or as I look around the room today, my heart is filled with warmth and love for our community. I mean, wow, what a turnout, right? Um, this is the power of Sangat. This is the power of community. We stand united because we know that we, we know and understand the power of Ikta, unity. We know that we are stronger together, not apart, which, I, which is why I'm calling on our city council members to vote for map 5B, not 2C. Vote for a stronger and better Bakersfield, a Bakersfield where we stand together and embrace our collective power, not yes. our differences. Map 5B is the best way forward. Thank you for your time and good evening. Thank you, Ms. Carr. Just a reminder. Just a reminder, I know that you are very passionate about this, but in the council meeting, we don't allow clapping during this time because it disrupts our meetings. So thank you for being very respectful. And now we'll move on. Welcome, Ms. Carr. Hi. Welcome uh, to my Sangat. First, I'll greet them. Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh. My name is Manpreet Kaur, and I'm a lifelong member uh, of this community, a Bakersfield resident, since my parents decided to make Bakersfield home. Um, and for my entire life, I've uh, called it, and, um, and something has always drawn me back to Bakersfield, no matter how far I try to go. Um, I've gone to school with and served on student um, body councils with some of the children of our esteemed council members as well. Um, but tonight, I'm here to share why I'm against Map 2C. Um, chief is that communities of interest are split and separated, which goes against the spirit of redistricting. Many of these were explicitly commented against in the letter by the Chamber of Commerce even. 
Um, and some of my reasons including, pa include pairing communities that are unlike, including the communities um, in Quail Road with uh, Ward 2 and downtown communities. Um, when the choice of uh, Ward 6 is far more natural and explicitly stated even by the Chamber of Commerce, um, Quail Road is far more similar to the nearby Stockdale estates than communities in East Bakersfield even. There are far too many reasons to name, uh, but for these reasons that I've explicitly stated, I stand against Map 2C. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you, Ms. Carr. Next speaker, please. Next speaker is Deep Singh. Following that, Camilla Chavez. And following that, Cecilia Castro. Welcome, Mr. Singh. Mr. Singh. Good evening to the Honorable Mayor, to the Honorable City Council members, to, to the Bakersfield staff, and of course to the community residents far and wide that came. My name is Nandeep Singh, and I'm the Executive Director of the Jakara Movement. I didn't actually come here to really speak uh, against 2C, but I'm, I feel compelled to, to just share some concerns about that specific configuration. As you've heard earlier, families in East Bakerfield take pride in their communities, but in Map 2C, Ward 1 is encroaching upon uh, ward, ward 7, oftentimes dividing the Punjabi community, as you'll hear from tonight, but also taking away from Ward 1 communities as well. In addition, while many have called for the river to be the natural border in the west, Map 2C jumps around the border on both sides of the river, explicitly going against Council Member Bob Smith's directives. And finally, in the north, Map 2C goes against best mapping practices by linking uh, the Norris River Lakes with Ward 3, connecting by, connecting by unpopulated canals and oil fields instead of populated regions. Finally, Council Member Freeman had expressed concerns about the lack of growth areas in Ward 6, but Map 2C exacerbates this by overpopulating Ward 6 and underpopulating Wards 3 and 5. This packing of communities is in, into, into Ward uh, 3 is especially concerning. For these and many other reasons, I must oppose uh, Ward 2C. You, you obviously see there's huge amounts of support for Map 5B. They're going to get an opportunity to share, but I do just want to say, if if in my remaining time, if you're in support of 5B, can I ask you just to stand? Jay to see Nakshi Panj B the Vich Hak Vicho, to see Kirpa Karke Kare Hojo, they are putting Hat Utekaro. There's no clapping, please go yeah. ahead and stand. And I, and I see the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Singh. And now the next speaker, please, Ms. Chavez. Following Ms. Chavez, it will be Cecilia Castro. Welcome, Ms. Chavez. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. I'm Camila Chavez, Executive Director of the Dolores Huerta Foundation, DHF. We have always taken the position, and the dem demographic analysis confirms, that Bakersfield must draw three to four Latino Voting Rights Act wards, and that the Black and Punjabi communities can be protected by keeping them as whole as possible as much within those L Latino Voting Rights Act wards. You now have seen six proposed maps that accomplish both tasks easily. If you adopt 2C, a map that only draws two Latino Voting Rights Act districts, you will be sued. The War 3 configuration in Map 2C has contiguity and compactness issues in addition to diluting the Latino vote. Strong legal precedent was set in the Luna case when Kern County tried to do the same thing as Map 2C, which makes it very unlikely that Bakersfield will prevail when the county did not. Now we have even more reason to believe that this is true. Tomorrow, new citizen voting age population, CVAP data, will be released. By all accounts, the number of eligible Latino voters will be even higher than it is now. That means that with the new CVAP data, it will be even easier to draw four Voting Rights Act districts in Wards 1, 2, 6, and 7. If 2C is adopted, Bakersfield will be sued and DHF will demand four Latino Voting Rights Act wards to be drawn using the new CVAP data. Four seats represents a majority of this council. We are disappointed that the Unity map was not advanced from its, in its March 4th form, but will accept 5B 
as an appropriate compromise. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chavez. Next speaker, please. Cecilia Castro, followed by Ashley De La Rosa. Following that, Gabby Fernandez. Welcome. Thank you. Hello, my name is Cecilia Castro. I'm the Deputy Director of the Dolores Huerta Foundation and I'm also a longtime resident of Bakersfield City. And today I'm actually uh, reading a letter on behalf of the Law Offices of Melo and Sarsfield LLP. And I also just wanted to mention that ACLU and MALDEF have also submitted, submitted letters for public comment. Dear council members, the Law Offices of Melo and Sarsfield represent a group of concerned citizens and voters that reside within the city of Bakersfield. We are a voting rights and civil rights law office. On behalf of our clients, we urge you to adopt a voting boundary map that provides a maximum opportunity for community groups, minority groups, to elect members to the city council. For decades, minority voters have been locked out of elective office in the city of Bakersfield and Kern County. Only in the last few years has this begun to change. The new census gives the city a historic chance to correct those past wrongs. We strongly urge you to adopt a truly fair and representative map. We stand ready to work with the city to develop a fair map. Of course, we are also prepared to vindicate our clients' rights in court if necessary. Sincerely, Law Offices of Melo and Sarsfield, LLP. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Castro. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Ashley De La Rosa, followed by Gabby Fernandez, and then Laura Cruz. Welcome. Good evening. My name is Ashley De La Rosa. I am the Education Policy Director for the Dolores Huerta Foundation. Um, throughout this time and before the census, we have empowered community members in the redistricting process to create and support maps at all levels of government that help them and their families and their communities. Our families have been very successful in the, in the Bakersfield City School District, State Assembly, Senate, and con Congressional Districts, and Tulare County Board of Supervisors. In the city of Bakersfield, however, these community members created a map that did not advance in the process because of, city of council members championing what is now map 2C and preserving their own interests and those of higher income, predominantly white residents in, at the expense of low income residents and the classes of people protected by the Voting Rights Act. Map 2C disenfranchises protected people by splitting African American voting blocks between four wards. Punjabi between four and Latinos spread all over seven wards. Map 2C, 2C's Ward 3 is particularly bad. Ward 3 is gerrymandered by using filler lands of inhabited oil fields, riparian areas, and a super narrow strip of 112 foot wide canal overpass along Coffee Road to enforce East Bakersfield communities into the same district as Norris and Fruitvale. The Norris Fruitvale portion of War 3 outpopulates the eastern portion in about 17,000 people. And of those 17,000 people, only one in three are Latino. This is a reason why um, City Council Member Ken Weir has been able to keep the ward seat for over 15 years. It is time for change, and Bakersfield has an obligation to ensure that the voting power of protected classes are not diluted like this. I urge the council to reject map 2C and adopt a map that draws at least three Voting Rights Act districts. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fernandez. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Gabby Fernandez, followed by Laura Cruz. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Hello, my name is Gabriela Fernandez. I work with the youth program at the Dolores Huerta Foundation. Um, before I even st submit my public comment, I would like to say that working with young people, um, we do like to teach them the process. And I think after seeing all the turnout that we had today, we have so many community members, we have people in the lobby. And I just think um, just teaching young people this process of redistricting, a lot of the time we teach them that it is so important to use their voice, that it really matters to come out and talk to folks. One of the things that I would like to say is 
that I would like to teach the youth that the that this is that this process um, does take community input, and I would like everyone to really take listen to this community and listen to everybody just coming together because from the beginning of the process, you all have received letters from organizations like ACLU, MALDIF, Common Cause, and DHF outlining your obligations in the redistricting process. But however, um, we come to two maps that we can't really get behind. So please, I really urge you um, to reject map 2C and to adopt 5B. I think it would be a great compromise for our community. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a great evening. Thank you, Ms. Fernandez. Next speaker, please. Laura Cruz, followed by Julia Gomez. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Buenas tardes a todos. Oh, okay. Uh, can we have a an interpreter, please? Yes. Spanish language interpreter. Just one minute. Yeah, we'll do that, Mayor. Thank you. Yeah, why don't we uh, just switch order for right now, and uh, we'll just, oh. Do you want me to translate for her? Our, our, our translator's on their way. Okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Buenas tardes a todos. Es este lo continuo. Buenas tardes a todos, mi nombre es Laura Cruz y estoy aquí para pedirles que adopten el mapa 5B. Muchas gracias y buenas noches. My name is Laura Cruz and I am here to ask you to adopt map uh, 5B, 5B, and that would be all. Have a good evening. Thank you, Ms. Cruz. Next speaker, please. Julia Gomez. Uh, good evening, members of the City Council and Mayor Go. My name is Julia Gomez, and I'm a staff attorney at the ACLU of Southern California, and we sent a letter to the council yesterday, and we've sent a number of letters to the council reminding you of your obligations. Um, I really want to emphasize the fact that the Fair Maps Act was passed precisely to address maps that look like the 2011 map that create extremely non-compact, almost non-contiguous districts. The fact that Map 2C has advanced so far shows the disregard by some to the Fair Maps Act. Um, and I'll just go ahead and outline some of the many ways that the map violates the Fair Maps Act. First, like the existing map, Map 2C breaks up the Punjabi Sikh community into four districts. And why does it do this? It does this to be able to maintain the two northern districts that have a very odd snake-like configuration. Um, Wards three and four violate the compactness requirement because they bypass nearby areas of population in, f in favor of more distant areas of population. Um, so again, we really, really urge you to take the Fair Maps Act seriously. These criteria were discretionary in 2011. They are no longer discretionary. I quickly just want to flag that you also have obligations under the Federal Voting Rights Act. Um, and here we have a case where a plaintiff would be easily able to meet the three jingles preconditions. It is possible to create a third Latino majority district. The Kern County case shows that there is RPV in, uh, in Kern County and likely in Bakersfield. Um, and totality of the circumstances evidence will show, as evidence show in Kern County, that Latinos have faced discrimination in Kern County. And a lot of the evidence that we adduced in the Kern County case was evidence of discrimination in Bakersfield. So we really, really urge you to reject Map C 2C, not only because it violates the Fair Maps Act, but because it very likely violates the Voting Rights Act. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gomez. Madam Clerk, uh, are there any other speakers for this section? Mayor Go, that was our final speaker. Thank you. So now, Madam Clerk, would you please call the first speaker in uh, support of MAP 2C? 
Mayor Go, I have not received any speaker cards in support of MAP 2C. Mayor Go, actually we have three speakers in favor of MAP 2C. Yolanda Partida, Nayli Aguirre, Ophelia Calderon. Turn that phone off, please. Uh, Madam Clerk, just so we can prepare for the next speaker, can you just announce that person, I think, who's in the lobby? Mr. Clegg, are they aware? A correction, Mayor, the, those wishing to speak or uh, in favor of uh, 5B, not 2C. If there are, but I understand there may be one member of the audience that is wishing to speak in favor of MAP 2C. Is there anyone, Madam Clerk, or is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor of MAP 2C? Just raise your hand, please. All right, uh, seeing none, Madam Clerk, would you please uh, now call the speakers for the next section. We're moving now to map 5B. And now, Madam Clerk, would you please call the first speaker in opposition to map 5B. Do we have any? Mayor Go, I have not received any speaker cards in opposition to map 5B. Thank you. And so now we will move on to those in support of MAP 5B. And would you call the first speaker, please? And let's just make sure, um, for those of you who are standing there, would you stand in the lobby, please, until your name is called? Okay. And um, we're just going to take a two-minute break here before we move on. But I would suggest that unless you really have to get up, uh, please remain in your seat so we don't lose that. We'll be right All right, we are ready to start now. And now, Madam Clerk. Madam Clerk, would you please call the next speaker? Mayor Go, we have received 20 speaker cards in favor of MAP 5B. The first public speaker, Jeff Heinley. Following that, Raji Brar. And following that, Rick Jaj. Welcome, Mr. Henley. Please raise the microphone. Not coming clear. Honorable Mayor, Council, staff, what a beautiful audience I have behind me. I came to speak in favor of 5B, uh, I think for obvious reasons. Uh, but one of the reasons that came to mind uh, while I was sitting with my daughter, who's right there and hates that I point her out because I'm her dad and I like to embarrass her. Um, she's taking a class at uh, BC. It's a political science class 
And so a lot of the conversations we're having around the house these days are about district maps. It's really kind of a strange coincidence. And a term that she brought to my attention was called uh, descriptive representation. A term that I was unfamiliar with, actually. And so I had to go to the Oracle of Google to figure out what descriptive representation means. And what it means is that a community like the Punjabi community, for example, that's behind uh, me today, has representation that um, coincides with their values, their community, their religious beliefs. It's, it's very descriptive and, and succinct. And with 5B, even though it's a compromise from Unity, the Unity map, it still meets the definition of what my daughter is learning in college to give her critical thinking skills to make fair and equitable decisions when she settles down in a community. And I think if we don't have that, then we do a disservice to not only our Latino communities and our African American communities and our Punjabi communities and our Asian communities. Um, thank you, Mr. Hunley. Your time, time is up. up. Yes, yes. Well, thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Raj Ibrar, followed by Rick Jaj, followed by Harjit Singh. Welcome. Please lower the mic. Sure. Good evening, everyone. Mayor Go, council members. My name is Raji Brar, and I'm here to speak with you tonight, not only as the co-founder of the Bakersfield Sikh Women's Association, but as a first-generation Sikh American, and more importantly, as a mother of Sikh American children who are here with me tonight. I'm here tonight to ask you all to adopt Map 5B. We at the Bakersfield Sikh Women's Association have been inundated with calls and messages from members of the Sikh community. And what they are saying to us is this, Put sanu vandar na dein, meaning don't let them split us. Our community wants to remain whole. They do not want their voice cut in half. Sikh Americans came to this country in search of their American dream. And that dream didn't just consist of a home with a white picket fence, two kids and a dog. It was much more than that. It was the love for the American American democratic process, a process in which you have a say and a process in which your voice is heard. That is why our Sikh community is here tonight. That is why many of them have left work early. That is why they have not picked up loads in their trucks. That is why my mother-in-law, who, who calls me every time her absentee ballot comes in so we can sit down together and go over candidates and propositions, is here tonight because she sees hope. Because they see hope because you gave them hope, the hope that their community will have a say and the hope that their community will have a voice. As a former city council member and a three-time governor appointee, I'm keenly aware of the benefits and more importantly, the purpose and need for redistricting as you all are aware. Map 5B will keep the city community together and by doing so, you, our elected officials, will be able to better assess and address our culturally appropriate needs and in turn be able to provide culturally appropriate resources in a more efficient and effective manner. Thank you, Ms. Brewer. We ask you to please adopt Map 5B. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And now, and now, the next speaker, please. Rick Shaj, followed by Harjit Singh, followed by Gorcharan Singh. Welcome. Good evening, Mayor Go and fellow city council members. My name is Rick Judge. I'm a local business owner and employing over 500, 500 residents here in Kern County and a first-generation Punjabi Sikh American. I'm here tonight representing the Sikh community and my steadfast support for Map 5B. I stand before you tonight to speak to you, our city council, and share with you what makes our community great, its people. This Sikh community works hard every day, a community that touches every industry you can name here in Bakersfield, from restaurants to retail, to farming, to trucking, to insurance, to the medical industry, 
and to the packing sheds of Grimway and Bolt House Farms. Our community works hard. Our family business is Countryside Corporation. We have developed multiple new businesses throughout the city of Bakersfield. We have touched every ward in this city to help bring businesses and jobs to our communities. And in doing so, we have come to realize its needs. From building medical facilities and educational centers in Ward 5, to new restaurants and retail businesses in Ward 6, and to a new ground-up shopping center in Ward 3, taking chances to invest where no one else would because we believe in the city and its people. However, we, the Sikh community, have never had the opportunity to have a united voice, even though we work day and night to help our city thrive. Tonight is the night that you can change this. You all can be champions for our community, and unite all of us as one, as we deserve to be, and not separate us into multiple wards, diluting our voice. We all must learn from our past mistakes and avoid litigation that will prove costly to the city and his taxpayers, us, the citizens of Bakersfield. I implore this council to take the correct and prudent action tonight and adopt Map 5B. Keep our sick community whole, do not split our voice. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Judge. Next speaker, please. Harjit Singh, followed by Korchara Singh, followed by Sonia Johal. Welcome. Madam, Madam Clerk, set the clock, please. Vaigul Khalsa, Vaigul Ji Ki Fateh. My name is Harji Singh, and I am from Goldara Sahib Bible Road, and I am a volunteer of the Priest. Vaigul Ji Ka Khalsa, Vaigul Ji Ki Fateh. My name is Harji Singh, and I am serving as a head priest in Bible Road, Sikh Temple, Bakersfield. I was in Goldara Sahib, and I was in Goldara Sahib, गोलदल सब देख विच पांच सौ तो वाद तकरीबन लोग एवरी डे ओम्देरिन ओम्देरिन जानते हैं तो उन दे विच जो उन दे दोखे सोखने वो सब मिलना लान के सांझे कर देने जेदे विच जो ना तो काफी मुश्किल आन दिया ने। I usually I usually communicate with more than five hundred people almost every week or every day and they all share their joys and sorrows with me. साड़ी पंजाबी कम्युनिटी देवे च सिटी काउंसिल देवे च नाम मेंबर होने करके सानुए प्रॉब्लम माहौल दिया ने ते मैं पांच बी वास्ते ए हमारे तक कर दाम पे सारे इस नू वोटिंग करो ताँ जो साड़ी ले प्रॉब्लम है वो सिटी काउंसिल तक पहुँच सके ये। Since we do not have any city council member for our community and I support 5B so that our the problems and the complications of my community can reach easily to the city council. मैं तो ना सारे ने यही रिक्वेस्ट कर दिया बेटू सीएम पांच बी वास्ते वोट करके इन्हों पास करो ताज़ा सारे ने बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद। So I request you all that please vote for five B so that and pass that map. So we are very thankful to you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Gorchara Singh, followed by Sonia Johal, followed by Bill Hungerford. Welcome. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Sare Pravan, Vai Guruji Ka Khalsa, Vai Guruji Ki Fateh. My name is Gurcharan Singh. I am a long-term resident of Bakerfield and president of Bakerfield Sikh Punjabi Senior City and Association. I am here to speak in support of Map 5B. As a resident advocate for the Punjabi Sikh senior city, and I appreciate that the map keeps communities together and abides by the law. This is important to all of the Jewish senior citizens who are retiring in this wonderful city. Thank you for your time, and we hope for your supporting board today. Please vote us the 5B. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Next speaker, please.
Sonia Johal, followed by Bill Hungerford, followed by Balmeet Singh. Welcome. Good evening, council members and my fellow community. Vairujika Kalsa, Vairujiki Fateh. My name is Sonia Kaur Johal. I'm a lifelong resident of Bakersfield and a member of the Punjabi Sikh community. Growing up in Bakersfield, my love for the community has grown each and every day. I graduated from Independence High School in 2018, attended Bakersfield College, and I'm currently enrolled in the University of California, Santa Barbara. It's currently my final year there, and I have finals this week, but I chose to be here today because I know how important redistricting is for my community. I have had tremendous memories growing up on the southwest side of Bakersfield. Some of my fondest memories of growing up there were Stone Creek Park and going there with my grandparents and siblings. The parks around my neighborhood of Panama and Stein have allowed me to meet many friends, some who look like me, others who didn't. It allowed my grandparents to meet with friends who spoke their language, and it allowed us all to commune together in a shared space. I recently visited the park again with my family, and I was very happy to see the diversity in the park. Bakersfield is our home, and we deserve a map that keeps us united. Map 5B will determine the direction of our communities for the next 10 years. The Sikh community has grown in Bakersfield over the past 10 years and continues to do so. With this, new Punjabi-led businesses have started, more houses have been bought, and diversity has increased. The growth of our community has brought the county more money, and it's only fair that our voices be given an equal opportunity to be heard and listened to. Map 2C is going to divide the Punjabi community into four wards and disempower our voices. As you can see from today, our community is united through our shared values, rich culture, and history. We stick together. As a community, we deserve a map that gives us fair representation as in, and is in compliance with the law. I ask council members today to do right for our community of Bakersfield and vote for map 5B. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Jahal. Next speaker, please. Bill Hungerford, followed by Balmeet Singh, followed by Vicki Shergill. Good evening, Mayor Go, council members. My name is Bill Hungerford. I'm a retired teacher with 37 years of service at McFarland High School. I'm here to express my support for Map 5B. I believe it is the best, in the best interest of our city to support this map. It does a great job following the guidelines set forth by the redistricting process. It also follows the natural geographic boundaries of our city. It reduces population deviations between wards. It keeps communities of interest united. It also keeps our city out of costly litigation if the alternative map is approved. And as a taxpayer, that is a major concern of mine. I don't want uh, my hard-earned tax do dollars wasted. It also gives the Sikh community a voice and keeps them together so they can better be address their cultural needs and concerns. Please adopt 5B. In closing, why would we want to divide our loving community which, with rich family values and talents that benefit Bakersfield and Kern County? It just doesn't make sense. Thank you for your time. Please adopt 5B. Thank you, Mr. Hungerford. Next speaker, please. Balmeet Singh, followed by Vicki Shergill, followed by Surjit Daliwal. Welcome, Mr. Singh. Thank you, Mayor Gill. Vaheguru ka Khalsa, Vaheguru ki Fateh. Mayor Go, the city council members. My name is Balmeet Singh. My family left Ohio more than 30 years ago in search of something. And I grew up in the multi-ethnic communities of Delano and McFarland. And 10 years ago, we moved to Bakersfield in search of that same something. And what we were in search of was a home, a home where we saw those around us represent us. And when I look at the city council today, 
I believe in my heart that all of you are sitting there today because you wish to serve the voice of the city and the voice of the community. You were compelled to serve just like we have been compelled to speak. And the voice of the community is clear. Map 5B. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Next speaker, please. Vicky Shargal, followed by Surjit Daliwal, followed by Chobanjit Singh. Welcome. Good evening, Mayor Go and council members. My name is Vicki Shergill. Um, I have been a resident of Bakersfield for the past 28 years, specifically east side of Bakersfield, Ward 1. I am also a local nurse practitioner who has worked the last 22 years with a diverse population of Kern County. I ask that you consider the 5B map option to keep our communities united, thus providing an accurate reflection and representation of our diverse communities. Map 5B provides a population that is balanced and diverse. Diversity allows for a space that will take into account different ideas, perspective, creativity, and a varied knowledge base. Keeping the communities united will encourage civic engagement and further involvement. Thank you so much for your time. We hope you all will make the right decision for the citizens and voters of Bakersfield. Thank you, Ms. Shurko. Next speaker, please. Surjit Daliwal, followed by Chobanjit Singh, followed by Audrey Chavez. Welcome, Mr. Daliwal. Uh, thank you. Good evening, Mayor uh, and the City Council and staff. My name is Surjit Daliwal, and I'm a long resident of Bakersfield and uh, also a business. Uh, business owner across, uh, across throughout the Bakersfield. And um, I'm here to speak in favor of uh, Map 5B. As a business owner and the resident, uh, I appreciate how the map keeps communities together and abide by the law. This is important for all of us taxpayers in Bakersfield. Thank you for your uh, time, and uh, we hope for your supporting on this 5B, and uh, please do vote for 5B. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Daliwal. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Jobanjit Singh, followed by Audrey Chavez, followed by Ricardo Del Hoya. Welcome, Mr. Singh. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Jobanjit Singh. I'm right here, residence in Bakersfield. I'm doing a business right here. Um, I here for to speak 5B one more time from all Indian community. We support 5B. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Next speaker, please. Audrey Chavez, followed by Ricardo Del Hoyo, followed by Traco Matthews. Welcome, Ms. Chavez. Thank you. My name is Audrey Chavez. And my pronouns are she, her, and Aya. I'm very proud to be here this evening to take part and to share my voice. And I'm so thankful to see so many people here as well. I've been, I was born and raised here in, in Kern County in, in Bakersfield. And I wanted to be able to take part in this process. Um, I just wanted to uh, invite those who are rejecting Map 2C, only those who are rejecting Map 2C, to please stand if you are rejecting map 2C. Rejecting map 2C. Thank you. I and I Thank am you. asking our city council to recognize now all those who will now be seated who are asking you to adopt 5B Jakara's unity map. Please, please be seated if you are supporting the unity map. The unity map does this. It unites us. It keeps governance fair as well as equitable. It was created by a diverse population and is widely supported by this diverse population. 
It was developed based on the United States Census 2020 data, a credible source. It keeps our people, our Punjabi and black communities whole, keeps us united. That is very, very important. Why do you feel that we should support this? Well, we need to support it because one, it will prevent costly and unnecessary lawsuits. It hasn't been that long since we've dealt with the after effects of the maldeath lawsuit, correct? Times have changed and our populations have needs and they need to reflect our populations. Our leadership needs to do that. Thank you, Ms. Chavez. Please, please adopt 5B. Thank you, Ms. Chavez. Thank you. And Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Good afternoon, Welcome. Honorable Mayor. Ricardo Del Hoyo. Go ahead and raise the mic a little bit, oh. that might be. Good afternoon, Honorable Mayor, fellow council, and everyone here. Buenas tardes. Um, so my name is Ricardo. I'm here as a proud resident of District 4, Ward 4. Oh. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, so proud resident of District 4, Bob Smith, proud graduate of Cal State Bakersfield, and a longtime resident for over 28 years here in the city of Bakersfield since I was two years old. So I'm here today on behalf of United Domestic Workers, UDW. We represent over 7,000 home care workers in Kern County, and 4,000 of those are proud members of UDW, like Mr. Singh, uh, Gurcharan Singh, that's here today. So we're here today to support MAP 5B. We are part of the Unity Coalition, that's DHF, the Central Labor Council, and United Domestic Workers, SEIU 521. So we hope that this council will listen to the community because we have a packed house today and we hope that this doesn't happen like it did in Kern County where they didn't listen to the Unity Coalition and they didn't follow the map that the community wanted. So we're here to please vote 5B and as Judge Tafoya mentioned in the Bakersfield Californian, we don't want the city of Bakersfield to get sued uh, down the line. So please, that concludes my comments. Thank you. Please vote 5B. Thank you, Mr. Del Hoyo. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Uh, we've run out of time, but uh, given the importance of this every 10 years, we have a few speakers left. Uh, we'll go ahead and um, have the remaining speakers speak. So, Mr. Matthews. Thank you so much, Madam Mayor, distinguished members of the council, and all of those who are here tonight. Great to see you. I'm here to share a story and two scriptures for why I am supporting Map 5B. My 99-year-old grandfather, Albert Desmond Matthews, served in the U.S. Army, fought for human rights and freedoms in World War II. He was devastated to learn that his voice still did not count the same level as other residents when he returned home from war. He fought the next 20 years along with other leaders of the civil rights movement to earn the right to vote, to have his voice matter in a tangible, meaningful way. As a social pastor, I'm proud to continue the legacy of work that my grandfather started many years ago. Proverbs 31, 8, and 9 say this. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up, judge fairly, defend the rights of the poor and needy. This verse affirms an enduring truth. God himself gives voice to humans. He expects us to honor that voice at maximum levels. Similarly, the words of the Declaration of Independence echo this truth when we recite, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men, all people are created equal, further affirming the equal value of human voice. Too often, we're the ones that say one voice matters or is more meaningful than another. There is only one map that gives broadest 
most meaningful voice to Bakersfield's communities of color, the Unity Map, Map 5B. A vote for that map not only fulfills the legal requirements of the city, but it also fulfills the ethical mandate we have to maximize the voices of those who have been historically not been heard. I implore you, speak up today for those who have no meaningful voice or vote. Choose Map 5B. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. Next speaker, please. Cecilia Delgado, followed by Martha Chocoteco, followed by Ophelia Calderon. Welcome. Please lower the map, the microphone, please. Good evening, everyone. My name is Cecilia Delgado. I am here on behalf of my friends, my neighbors, my vecinas, my comadres, everyone who was unable to be here. And I am a city, I am a resident of the city of Bakersfield. I'm here to ask you to adopt map 5B, as this map best keeps together communities of interest. Therefore, it is the right map for everyone here in Bakersfield. I trust that you will reject my map 2C. Thank you and have a good day. Thank you, Ms. Delgado. Next speaker, please. Martha Chocoteco, followed by Ophelia Calderon, followed by Yolanda Partida, and Nayli Aguirre. Necesito interprete. Oh, okay, welcome. Uh, um, so, solo un momento, ahorita viene. Uh, interpreter, Spanish interpreter, can you hear us? Welcome. Buenas noches. Mi nombre es Marta Chocoteco. Estoy representando aquí a la comunidad. A, soy miembro de las con la Dolores Huerta a, y estoy aquí para que pedirles que tomen una decisión correcta sobre la 5B, eh, que necesitamos más seguridad en las escuelas a, por un Bakersfield mejor y también eh, por mi barrio que Tengo 20 años viviendo ahí y no tengo luz en la calle y no tengo banqueta. Um, y en 20 años no he mirado ni una mejora, entonces es mi oportunidad de, en esta noche de pedirles que tomen una decisión correcta en la 5B. Good evening, my name is Marta Chocolateco and I am representing the community. I am a member of the Dolores Huerta Foundation, and I am here to make sure that you, may, to, you take the correct decision on 5B, uh, because we need more safety in the schools for a better Bakersfield, and also for my neighborhood. I've been living in my neighborhood for 20 years, and I don't have uh, street lighting, and I don't have sidewalks. And in 20 years, I have not seen an improvement. So this is my opportunity tonight to ask that you make a the right decision to make a, a right, the right decision on 5B. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Ophelia Calderon, followed by Yolanda Partida. <coughs> followed by Buenas noches, mi nombre es Ofelia Calderón y estoy aquí para apoyar el mapa 5B. Gracias. Good evening. My name is Ofelia Calderón and I am here in support of map 5B. Thank you. Thank you and thank you Ms. Calderón. Next speaker, please. Yolanda Partida, followed by Nalali Aguirre, followed by Jason Wharton. Hola, Welcome. buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Yolanda Partida. 
apoyo el mapa 5 porque nuestra comunidad va a estar unida. Gracias. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Yolanda Partida, and I support Map 5B because this will keep our community united. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Partida. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Nayeli Aguirre, followed by Jason Wharton. Hola, buenas noches, señores del jurado y público que nos acompaña esta noche. Mi nombre es Nayeli Aguirre, soy un residente de Bacon Street y apo apoyo el mapa 5B porque es un mapa justo con nuestras comunidades. Espero que nos apoyen. Muchas gracias por escucharnos esta noche. Espero y pasen muy buenas noches. Gracias. Good evening, council members and our public here tonight. My name is Nayeli Aguirre and I am a resident here in Bakersfield. And I am in favor of map 5B because it is a just map with our communities. And I hope that you support us. Thank you so much for hearing us tonight. I hope that you have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Aguirre. Madam Clerk, next speaker, please. Jason Wharton. Good evening. Welcome. Please raise the microphone. Thank My you. name is Jason Worthen. I've been a part of Bakersfield uh, uh, residence uh, for the past 20 years. Uh, half of that time was um, in the Southwest in the area of uh, the Indian and the Sheik residence. Um, esteemed Mayor Karen uh, Ga and Argo and Bakersfield City Council members, I ask you to adopt Map 5B or the March 4th J Jakar Unity Map and above all else to reject map 2C. Mayor Go, I see your dedication to underserved communities rooted in your upbringing and values as a child of missionaries born in India. I am also reading in the paper that you play key roles in Kern County's redistricting in 2011 with uh, disastrous consequences. If you are called to vote in this redistricting decision, I ask you to vote in alignment with your roots, your values, your sworn duty to uphold the Constitution and serve all Bakersfield residents. This is your chance to be the true leader for all of us, to choose the path not taken by the county in 2011, and to avoid catastrophic loss to taxpayers' dollars and to the credibility. Bakersfield regional and national reputation are at stake, and all eyes are on this hearing this evening. Please vote to adopt either 5B or the March 4th Jakara Unity Map. Reject Map 2C. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Worthen. Madam Clerk, are there any other speakers for this section? Mayor Go, that was our final speaker. Thank you. So at this time, I'll close the public hearing and return it to Council for comment and action. Council Member Gonzalez. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first, I want to just thank everyone uh, who's here today for being here tonight. Uh, I want to thank all those who attended our various public meetings, workshops, and all those who have sent letters, uh, emails, who have written community voice pieces, uh, those who have called us, who have texted us, who have communicated with us uh, throughout the last few months. Um, I'm very proud of this process, and I'm proud of everyone in our community tonight who has contributed to this process. We are a better community now uh, because of all of you and because you've been a part of this, so thank you. You know, we've all spent a considerable amount of time uh, comparing maps 2C and 5B. And as I've compared and contrasted both maps, uh, I have to tell you I support 5B for five primary reasons. Number one, it protects an important community of interest and strengthens it. That is our Punjabi Sikh community. As we've heard and seen tonight, the strength of the Punjabi community in our, in our greater Bakersfield community is strong. And it's an important community. And we know it's an important community because for years and years, many of us elected leaders have attended celebrations and parades 
and uh, Sikh festivals and various different events in the Sikh Gurdwaras and in the Punjabi community. The ceremonial events are nice, but action in a substantive way, in this way, is even better. And so we need to remember that. Number two, uh, this map 5B really creates three Latino majority Voting Rights Act wards. Um, I've heard some arguments in this community that this map is nothing more than uh, an interest of a vocal minority of people. But this actually cannot be further from the truth. And it's ironic because according to this last census count, the Latino population is now the majority population of Bakersfield. The Latino community is now the majority, consisting of 53% of Bakersfield. 53% is more than half. More than half of our Latino population within the community ought to have an opportunity to elect their representatives on this city council. And it really is incumbent upon us, quoting a, a letter that we received, really to provide Latino voters three council wards in which they have an opportunity to elect candidates of their choice. Number three, map 5B is not one special interest interests mapped, but in fact, it is a product of a compromise between lots of stakeholders, many of us council members, and others throughout the community. Remember, just a few weeks ago, we had a series of maps that were drafted through the Doris Huerta Foundation, Jakara Movement, our consultants, others throughout the community. But it was through much dialogue, important conversations, gives, giving and taking, that we were able to develop a map that was a good compromise for everyone. Now, I, I didn't get everything I wanted in this map. And there's many neighborhoods that I've represented for six years that I care deeply about that I will no longer be representing. And that, that really hurts me as a public servant who spends often many nights and weekends trying to do the best for my constituents, as all of my colleagues do. But sometimes we have to make those compromises in order to move our community forward. Number four, uh, it's not just the grassroots groups that are in support of Map 5B. If you read the letter uh, from the Bakersfield Business Coalition, which consists of the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce, <clears throat> the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, the Bakersfield Association of Realtors, and Kern Tax, you will, you will see a criteria that they established of what would make a good uh, map. Map 5B is the only map that meets all of the criteria that was established. And finally, on a few occasions, some of my colleagues on the dais uh, have quoted our founding fathers. And I think that's, that's appropriate. And tonight, I want to offer this quote from Thomas Jefferson, who said that government is the strongest of which every person fills themselves a part. Government is the strongest, strongest of which every person fills themselves a part. My colleagues, we have before us an opportunity tonight to make our city stronger than ever. And the one map that makes all people feel more included. And so I'm making a motion tonight to adopt map 5B and only map 5B for the first reading. Thank you, Councilmember Gonzalez. Councilmember Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Wow, what a, what a great community we live in. It's just very inspiring to see democracy in process as we've went through this. The, the first map that the advocates submitted was changed by the Punjabi community, you know, and, they, and then it was adopted. They worked together. We had the Oleander, the, the historic Oleander community come forward a couple meetings ago and, and the map was changed to, to make downtown work for them. 
uh, council members had input and and the map was changed for for different reasons for them the the chamber of commerce i again read their letter as a letter of support and i i to believe that we are stronger together and that this is truly a unifying process and a unifying map. So I am in favor of 5B. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Smith. Councilmember Parlier. Thank you, Mayor. Well, I just want to layer in on top what uh, Andre said about the chamber letter. <clears throat> Excuse me. So my interpretation of that letter is it leans one direction more than the other. And I also agree that, you know, with lines on a, on a map, not everybody's necessarily going to get what they want. Uh, and there's not such a thing as a perfect map. Now I want to talk a little bit about, about me and my history and my history with Ward 7. So I was uh, an unknown out in Ward 7 eight years ago. And uh, I ran against the Republican, I ran against the Democrat. And one was for the, from the Punjabi community, too. Uh, but I made a promise to that community, uh, whoever they were, that I would be available, I'd be for them, I'd support them, uh, day or night. And I believe I've kept that promise. Uh, the Weibel Temple, when it was 3 o'clock in the morning and a homeless person broke in and was bleeding all over the temple, I woke up, got the police there, we took care of it. When the, uh, the temple on Stein needed a turn lane, uh, from Hosking into Stein, um, I took care of it. Uh, when the temple on South H uh, just recently had a, a problem uh, with their new building because the uh, PG&E panel is stuck on a container ship somewhere out in the ocean, uh, I contacted PG&E and uh, we took care of it. So as I look out at this audience, I see my people, I see Ward 7. And uh, you've always been with me, and I'm not going to leave you now. I support 5B. Thank you, Councilmember Parlier. And Councilmember Freeman now. Thank you, Mayor. And, uh, and I want to thank all of you for coming out tonight. Um, I really do appreciate hearing all of your thoughts, and especially those who talked more specifically about your community and things that meant to you, not so much the people who threaten to sue us if they don't get their way. Um, that doesn't really hold anything with me. What I wanted to hear was your voices and how you feel about your community and your community of interest and just sort of your heartfelt reasons for why you support different maps. And most of you supported 5B <laughs> tonight that we heard. Um, I. I think it's very important that we have the time to really think through all the issues, including what we heard tonight, some of which is new information. I mean, you've heard a lot of it, but we didn't have you speak personally and tell us how you felt. Um, new information came in, letters from the chamber and other things today that um, I want, I hope I'm given the time to really think deeply about this, follow up perhaps with some of you, but with all the input we've read today and tonight. Um, so I can think about this and, and hopefully make the right decision. So uh, I'm in support of the staff recommendation to approve both of these maps and move them on to the next meeting. Uh, and I hope I'm allowed the time to think about this so I can make the best decision for, for all of you in our community. So. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Councilmember Freeman. Any other requests to speak? Councilmember Arias. Thank you, Mayor. How beautiful is it tonight? It is amazing to see this community come out in full support of all colors, of multi-generations, of all different parts of the community, from teachers to lawyers to advocates to parents, grandparents, bringing their children. This is what democracy looks like. And it is just so beautiful to see all of you brothers and sisters here tonight. So I, I just want to say thank you. 
Thank you for taking the time. Thank you for clearing your schedule. Thank you for preparing your marks and, and being so professional, courteous, and respectful. I think you truly are emblematic of model citizens, model citizens that lead us forward that inform us as leaders, as representatives of our community to make the very best decisions that we can possibly make for our great city. So I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, specifically wanna thank um, my sister Raji Barar, uh, who actually really struck a chord inside of me, uh, reminding me of one of the, you know, very visceral reasons why I do what I do and serve the community that I love. Um, my great-grandmother, bless her heart, rest in peace, Modesto Buendia. She was a single mother of seven, um, was a farm worker all of her life, uh, spoke only Spanish, tried to speak English, and then her kids shot her down because she didn't have the right accent. Um, we communicated through plain Scrabble. It was the most beautiful thing, sharing that opportunity with her. Um, and despite spending most of her time working, providing for the family, feeding the kids, making sure they go to school, staying out of trouble. When it was election time, she brought the advisory council to the kitchen table. <laughs> and that was an advisory council of seven individuals, all of her children, my five tias, my two tios. And it was there. <laughs> It was their responsibility to translate all of the English into Spanish so that she could understand exactly who she was gonna vote for, exactly what level of government she was voting for, and exactly who was going to represent the community that she grew up in. And I think that is the level of seriousness that each and every one of you have brought to the table today. And for that, I couldn't be more grateful. But the other thing that she fundamentally believed in is that we have shared values, that from our broad, diverse backgrounds, we have shared values. And one of those values is the belief that her vote mattered, that her vote mattered. And she shared that with all of us, and I so appreciate that. And I bring that up because I think Councilwoman Gray mentioned that we must be fighting. Every opportunity we get, we must be fighting for shared values. The value to, and the liberty and freedom to keep our communities together, right? To prevent them from being separated. The right to fair representation, either through le elected official or at, at, at different levels of government, and the right to opportunity. I think we kind of downplay, you know, just the sheer importance of not only redistricting, but take it a step back to the census. Right? All, this whole entire process is based on the census and all of the hard work that many advocates, frankly, in this room, you know, put forth so that we could have an, a good count of all of our community residents, whether citizens or not. Right? These are our brothers and sisters that live right, right in, our, in our neighborhoods. And so I don't take this lightly. I think it's incredibly important that we get it right. And I think we have tonight all the information that we need to make the right decision. So with that, I firmly believe that we should move forward with 5B. Thank you, Councilmember Arias. Councilmember Gray, please. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. I'd wanna start out tonight to just thank you for coming out and participating in the process. Um, I have, I'm a newer council member, as you all know, and I have, got, had the opportunity to get to know the Sikh community um, a bit, uh, not like Chris does, but I do wanna just tell you that I appreciate the hard work which you have um, contributed to our community, your business owners, um, you're out there making a difference, educators, and so forth, so I wanna tell you thank you for that. I also pray, I talked like, um, uh, my council member mentioned last week, two weeks ago, about shared values. And no matter how this vote goes, we may agree and we may disagree. And to be honest with you, I disagree with the MAP 5B. 
But it doesn't mean that I disagree with you as a group of people. It doesn't mean that you are any less than any other group of people in this community. We all have been given equality, that we're equal under our Constitution. And I want you to know that I am not against anyone and I'm not for anyone. I'm making the decision for my ward that I feel is the best decision for Ward 6 and for the best decision for the community. So however this ends up, let's stay united as a community. There's too much hatred. To be honest, I saw a little bit of that tonight, not not through the Punjabis, but let's, let's put that aside and let's move forward as a community and not let this redistricting thing totally interrupt who we are <laughs> here in Bakersfield, California. What I don't see in our, in our world today is that we can't agree to disagree any longer. We're not all gonna agree. So let's agree to disagree. We have votes on this council, on this dais. When we leave here, and we may totally disagree with one another, but when we leave here, the next time we see each other, Council Member Gray, how are you doing tonight? We give each other that respect. We give each other that encouragement. And that's what we need to do as a city. We need to begin to encourage one another and lift each other up as the Lord would call us to do. God is real in this city of ours. He is real. And he expects us to give grace to one another. So if we agree or we don't agree, Let's agree that we're going to show grace to one another, that we're not going to be a city that is threatening lawsuits and all this nonsense. Let's be a city that we can come together, work out our issues together, and the values that we share, let's, let's lift those up and let, let those be our standard. That's what I would pray for and I hope for for the city of Bakersfield. So I make no, I make no um, apologies for my opinion. It's my opinion. And I have the right to that opinion as all of you do. So let's agree to disagree and I'll give every one of you a big old hug at the end of this thing tonight if you'll still give grace to me. All right, thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Gray. Councilmember uh, Vice Mayor, please. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I really do appreciate all the input, the community, not just tonight, but over, throughout this process, how much you've been participating and sharing and um, in a civil discord with a few exceptions. It's been a long process. And no matter what the vote is tonight or what the vote is next, next meeting, now is when the work starts. We're gonna have to live what the decision is and make the best of it for this entire community. Beyond just the people that showed up tonight or beyond other people that couldn't show up tonight. It's been a great process, and it's one I'm very proud of. And I hope that we continue our passion and our devotion to ourselves and to this community. I don't know how the vote's going to turn out, but it's been a great process, and I thank you for your participation. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Councilmember Gonzalez. Thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to respond quickly to my colleague, uh, Councilmember Gray. I appreciate what you're saying. I, I too hope that we can all pay each other respect and and support the values of equality and and uh, civil participation and civil respect. But how can we do that if not 
everyone is invited to sit at the table and be part of the conversation. That is, the, that is really the heart of the issue here. And this is our opportunity for us to become that more beautiful community. It is our chance to become uh, a more prosperous community by allowing an opportunity for more of our community to engage us in a substantive way. We cannot just paper over the long history of disenfranchisement in our community. The, the, the stories that I carry from my parents and grandparents uh, are real. And there's many stories that we can hear from people who have felt um, marginalized. And this is an opportunity for us in a very real way to ensure that more people throughout our community on all four corners have that access to help guide this city over the next 10 years. So I'm gonna double down on my motion and call for the vote. Thank you, Council Member Gonzalez. Council, Council Member, Member Gray, please. Oh. Council Member Gonzalez, I appreciate what, what you've said here tonight, with the exception that we haven't brought everybody to the table. And I believe that our city staff, I believe that our um, council members have done everything that we possibly could do to bring everybody to the table. And we've heard from those that have wanted to participate. So I wouldn't want anybody leaving here tonight to feel like the city hasn't done its job to bring everybody to the table. That I believe we've done. And that's why you all are here tonight, because you accepted the invitation to be able to participate in the process. So I would thank you again for, partic for participating in the process, giving us an opportunity to hear from you. And we do, and, and when this redistricting vote is done, we still invite you to the table. This is not the last decision that we're gonna be making as a community for Pete's sakes. We do this every two weeks or twice a month. So participate in the process. We invite you to do so. And again, I wanna tell you, I appreciate how you all have presented yourselves. You have been very respectful. And those are the types of speakers that we wanna hear from. We want to hear from those that really, truly have the, the community at heart. And we will be more than w willing to listen to you. So know that um, you're always invited to this table at the Bakersfield City Council. We appreciate each one of you. Thank you, Councilmember Gray. Um, Madam Attorney, I need to conference with you, please. I think the mayor is confused about the staff recommendation. Um, I'm going to call on Council Member Freeman, and then we're going to go to the city attorney for some clarification. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <coughs> Uh, just to clarify, is do we currently have just one motion, and that's uh, Councilman Arias' uh, motion? Councilmember Gonzalez's vote. motion. So we have one motion so far. Correct. Yeah. And uh, uh, this. No, I haven't put a motion yet. So anyway, my my uh, my previous remarks were, and I still hold to them. I received a lot of information from you tonight that I'd like really to think about 
maybe to follow up with some of you. New information came in that I read right before the meeting from different groups in the community, uh, the chamber, the realtors. Um, and I would hope to just have the chance to think about that. I'm not really going <laughs> to lobby any council members to change their opinions on anything. Um, I've just found that this is a very important decision. We might even reach greater consensus if we were allowed a little time to reflect on all the new stuff we heard tonight. Uh, so I still hope we might be given that ability. Um, I've, I'm the oldest one here, and I'll tell you, I've seldom benefited from my impatience in my life. So I would hope we could, um, I, would, I would move that we, staff's recommendation that we pass both, this is I guess the first reading, is that correct, of both maps and move them on for final vote in two weeks, uh, when at least I've had time to really reflect deeply on this, try to make the right decision. So that would be my motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Freeman. And um, Madam City Attorney, would you like to make a clarification, please? Yes, Honorable Mayor and Council. So uh, Councilmember Freeman's motion is the last motion, so his motion goes first. And depending on what happens, we will see if we move on to Councilmember Gonzalez's motion. Thank you. And Councilmember Smith, do you have another comment? Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought, I thought Councilmember Gonzalez called the motion and, and that the vote should have been taken when he did that. It's the last motion that goes first. But, but he called. Mayor, Councilmember Smith, excuse me, but um, when Councilmember Gonzalez called that motion, uh, what we should have done is taken a two-thirds vote in order to stop the debate. We did not do that. Um, and so, again, I would, I would back up my colleague that Councilmember, uh, Councilmember Freeman's motion came last. We should vote on it. Uh, if that motion fails, then we will go to Councilmember Gonzalez's motion, and in the future, uh, we'll need to advise the chair that you need to take a two-thirds vote to stop all comments after that. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Oh. Ma Mayor, I did call the question. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, it's okay. too late. I saw that she had buzzed in just before you had called, before you had done that. Okay, so we currently have a, we have two motions. The second motion goes first. And so we have Council Member Freeman's motion. Please cast your votes. Motion fails with council members Arias, Gonzalez, Smith, and Parlier voting no. Thank you. And now, um, Madam City Attorney, you wanted to make a clarification on council member Gonzalez's motion. It's no longer needed, Mayor Gold. Now it's no longer needed. Council member Gonzalez's motion now is up for a vote. Please catch your votes. Motion is approved with council member, with vice mayor Weir voting no. <laughs> council member. Thank you. I know you're very happy and passionate, but uh, thank you for being so respectful. And so that is the end of that section. We Mayor still God, have more business. You need to read it. Go ahead. Motion is approved with Vice Mayor Weir and Council Member Gray voting no. And with Council Member Freeman abstaining. Thank you, Madam City uh, Clerk. And so now that brings the end to that section. We have further business tonight. Uh, I don't know whether all of you would like to stay, but um, this probably would be the time uh, where you can exit if you don't wish to stay for the next section. And we'll take a break.
waiting for one more person. Okay, let's continue now. Madam Clerk, would you please read the next item? Reports item 10A. A public safety update and presentation will be provided by Bakersfield Police Chief Greg Terry, Bakersfield Fire Chief John Frando, and by Kern County District Attorney Cynthia Zimmer. Thank you, City Manager. Thank you, Mayor and Council. As was the case last meeting, we're not quite done. This public safety update is in response to a council referral to bring this topic back to you. Unfortunately, our partner, District Attorney Cynthia Zimmer, was unable to um, make it this evening um, as of uh, today uh, with um, a scheduling conflict. Uh, but we do have our two chiefs with us. They'll run through uh, some valuable statistics um, uh, related to both of their departments as well as uh, Christy Tenter, our Human Resources Director, is here with us to speak to our hiring efforts on the police side. Um, we understand the interest and, and the hour of moving timely. <coughs> we'll do that and, and then be available for questions, and we'll ask Chief Frando to kick us off. Welcome, Chief. Thank you, Mayor. Honorable Mayor, uh, members of the City Council, John Frando, Fire Chief. Uh, I want to talk a little bit today about uh, the Bakersfield Fire Department. Uh, we are a department made up of 223 members uh, from our training division, who is currently training 27 of our newest members who will be hitting the floor in August, uh, to our dispatchers who dispatch your fire department to over 50,000 calls in 2011. 2021 uh, to our suppression division who are basically our boots on the ground who provide that hands-on service uh, to our citizens. Uh, we are a busy fire department. When we compare our fire department to other uh, jurisdictions, our, our comp uh, departments, uh, we are extremely busy. We're typically on the, on the top or near the top. In fact, uh, in 2021, we were behind only Stockton uh, for the busiest fire department by uh, incident number. Uh, as you can see there uh, on the slide in 2017 to 2018, that was a little bit of a dip in, in call volume, um, but over the past uh, 10, 11 years, we've really uh, increased our call volume normally by about 3,000 to 3,500 uh, calls per year. Uh, that call, that um, writing on the right, uh, call volume in 2010 was 26,676. 89% increase in that 11 year span. So we are getting more and more busy every year. Uh, I wanted to focus a little bit more on uh, fires and, and medical services that we provide. You know, as a fire department, you know, our, our name is in our, in our business. You know, we uh, respond to uh, fire emergencies, but that's not our predominant uh, incident type. We only respond to about 8% of our, uh, or rather 8% of the calls that we respond to are about our fires. Uh, the other uh, percent uh, that is really the dominant call type uh, is medical emergencies, which takes up about 60% of our calls. But I did want to focus in on fires and, and EMS emergencies. So in, in 2021, we responded to 4,080 4, uh, total fires, and that's car fires, trash fires, structure fires, uh, every call fire type. Uh, when we, we wanted to break that down a little bit though and focus a little bit more on structure fires. Uh, of those uh, 4,080 
uh, fires, we actually responded to 452 structure fires. Uh, more importantly, I uh, wanted to focus in on the vacant structure fires. Uh, when you look at the uh, numbers there, 117 of those 452 uh, structure fires were in vacant structures. Uh, vacant structures are really uh, a, a serious concern for firefighters and they should be for the community as well. Uh, vacant structures, uh, some of the ones that are here in town burn uh, several times. In fact, this, this uh, structure that we have shown on the slide here uh, has burnt nearly uh, half a dozen times. This is on Chester Avenue, about the 800 block of Chester Avenue. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see up in the smoke there, uh, to the right of the fire, there's actually firefighters up there cutting a ventilation hole, uh, and we have members inside. Uh, there, we also have a, another vacant building, a commercial building over on um, Baker that has burnt a dozen times or more. So uh, the vacant structure fires are definitely a concern to us. Uh, subsequent fires in these buildings, you know, as you can imagine, the first fire in these buildings typically burns the, the rooming contents, starts getting a little bit into the structural members. Um, but as we go in, we perform our searches, we overhaul the fire, we start pulling uh, either the lath and plaster or the drywall from the structural members. Subsequent fires have uh, direct exposure to those structural members, so uh, you have more uh, risk of structure collapse uh, in subsequent fires. So very important that we address these vacant structure fires. Uh, so as you can imagine, the subsequent fires definitely pose a higher risk to uh, not only people who are inside the building, uh, which oftentimes could be firefighters, but it definitely poses a higher risk to our, to our firefighters. Uh, during the investigation of these vacant structure fires, uh, we often find that uh, they have no utilities. So when we go in, we fight a, a structure fire, we often partner with the utility company who will come in, they'll pull the gas meter, they'll um, disconnect the power either from the meter or from the pole. So a lot of these structures should not have an ignition source because we've worked with our utility partners to uh, ensure that. Um, but one of the things that is determined on our investigation and talking to the neighbors of these uh, vacant buildings is that there's been transient activity inside of that structure. Uh, and whether or not they felt like they had a voice, didn't have a voice, didn't know who to call, uh, the calls were typically not made uh, to notify the city that they had transients inside those buildings. So it's definitely something that we would like to address uh, and we're going to in the, in the near future. Uh, and, and we're gonna do that by a door hanger program. So one of the things that we've been working on since I made fire chief in December is uh, developing a door hanger um, that would go on the doors of the neighbors of these vacant structures, letting the neighbors know that there, there shouldn't be any activity inside of that structure. And if they do see people inside of that structure, uh, we'll give them the number to call. The number that we have on our door hanger right now is the non-emergency line for BPD. Um, but we've been partnering with uh, Bakersfield Police Department, Code Enforcement, the Fire Department uh, to get people out of those structures, people who don't belong in, in those vacant buildings. Uh, we do sweeps occasionally to ensure that people are out and Code Enforcement resecures the, the buildings for us. So it really is important for us to uh, let them know that they have a voice, they shouldn't tolerate people inside of those vacant buildings um, that are next to their homes because we don't want those fires to get extended to the neighbor's homes and, and burn their property or threaten their lives. So we wanna give them a reporting mechanism and, and it will be the non-emergency line and, and perhaps the Bakersfield mobile app. We're still working on developing this door hanger, so there's a little bit of uh, wiggle room there for, for massaging the language and giving people a voice and, and know how to contact uh, the appropriate, appropriate department. Uh, as medical emergencies, as I mentioned earlier, we respond to uh, a lot of medical emergencies. 60% of what we do is, is respond to medical emergencies. Uh, 28,481 to be exact in 2021. Uh, one of the things that was really a concern to us and still is was COVID-19. Uh, when, when it came around, we definitely had to, to really pay attention to our personal protective equipment, making sure that our firefighters are, are trained to protect themselves and one another from uh, COVID and COVID exposure. Uh, we responded to 925 confirmed COVID cases in 2021, 
uh, 604 suspected. So it was really a concern to us because as we get our members sick and we start sending people home, uh, we're also sending home those, those close contacts. And, and as you could imagine, living inside of a fire station for 24 hours a day with one another, uh, lots of overtime opportunity because we are short staffed right now. Uh, it was really a challenge for us, but your Bakersfield firefighters stepped up. There was very few times that we actually had any piece of equipment uh, shut down for, for even minutes or hours as we called people back off duty to, to respond and, and work an extra shift to, to cover cover people who had to be either uh, quarantined or isolated. Uh, adapting to COVID, you know, as, that, as you can see in the pictures there, that top center is uh, retired fire chief Anthony Galagaza. You know, we are still playing our part in the community, donating blood when the, when the need arised. Um, on the top right, firefighters had to learn to, to wear masks almost 24 seven to protect one another. Uh, we partnered with, uh, with other agencies to get out a message to only call 911 in a true emergency and we helped define that uh, in some of those uh, little blocks there on that flyer. Uh, our fire dispatchers did an amazing job uh, warning basically our crews who were responding to potential COVID exposure. Uh, we really partnered with uh, the the medical director, Kern County EMS, and, and really massaged the language and the, and the questions that they could ask the callers so that we could identify people who were potentially infected with COVID so we could ensure that uh, our firefighters knew it and they can uh, make sure they were wearing the proper personal protective equipment, uh, reducing our exposure. And then on the left there, definitely a feel good for us. Uh, you know, we never want to be disconnected with the school system, with the children, uh, being able to give those public safety uh, speeches and demonstrations. Uh, we did uh, virtual uh, Read Across America and Celebrity Reader. In fact, I just did one last week and it was pretty amazing. Uh, our medical response uh, enhancement uh, two years ago through public, uh, public safety and vital services measure, that, uh, that smaller rig there in the foreground is one of the two rescues that we implemented to handle uh, the uh, overwhelming call volume of emergency medical uh, calls that we were dispatched to. Uh, previously, this is actually fire engine number six uh, over on Brundage Lane near Union. Half of its calls, uh, they respond east of Union, the other half are west of Union. Uh, at station six was one unit and the other unit was on um, East 21st Street near Baker. So pretty much uh, most of its call volume was handled uh, on east of Union incidents. So station two and station six are the two stations that got those rescues. Uh, those are basically two member emergency or response units that handle primarily medical emergencies. So we, we uh, really wanted to try to uh, tailor the responses for those units to what they're really designed for. Uh, quick response, they don't carry water, pumps, fire hose, they carry firefighters, medical equipment, and they're really good for medical emergencies, but also as a component for two in and two out, for a safety component, command and, and, command and uh, on, on uh, structure fire incidents, sorry about that, um, so we definitely use them, but when we have so many resources committed to a structure fire, uh, that's one of the first rigs that's uh, let loose from a fire so it can handle all the emergencies that are going on in a really impacted area. Uh, and what we've noticed with these uh, response units is that they improved department's response times in those busiest districts. Uh, they're able to uh, divide up basically the call volume between two different resources in that first end. Station six actually responds to 5,500 calls per year, which is about 11% of our call volume. Um, and again, we, we respond the most suitable piece of equipment to those emergencies. Um, you know, the, the rescue responds to the first uh, medical incident. Subsequent calls that are concurrent actually are handled by the engine. But what that has done is it, it keeps those neighboring jurisdictions who would have normally had to respond in from a long distance to handle those concurrent calls. It kept them in their first in districts, protecting the, the area and, and protecting the residents of that first in district. Uh, if we look at uh, see what, some of my last slides here, we want, wanted to really track the homeless impact on our department as well. Uh, as I mentioned, we responded to 50,000 calls per year and uh, 5,500 incidents had some form of, of homeless impact, uh, whether it was uh, fire related, EMS related, or good intent calls. And I'll explain briefly what a good intent call is. 
previous fire chiefs to myself, they really wanted to kind of steer away from mentioning good intent calls because they, they like to think that those are calls where people didn't need us. Well, I beg to differ. Those are calls where people were compelled to call 911 because they thought there was a true emergency. And whether it's somebody laying down on the sidewalk, somebody laying down in the park, if people are comp compelled to call 911 for a potential medical emergency, we are gonna respond, we're gonna respond quickly, and we're gonna vet out that call. And we're gonna provide services if they're needed. So good intent calls are not uh, something we should shy away from. We should embrace that, and we're gonna bring some some sort of uh, peacefulness to the caller to make sure that we're handling that potential emergency. Uh, my last slide here, uh, you know, just trying to compare the things that we've done in uh, the first two months of 2021 and 2022. You know, you're looking at uh, fires, EMS, the other uh, types of calls that we respond to. Uh, definitely things are still in an upward uh, trend and it looks like we're gonna be even busier uh, this year than we were last year. And that concludes my presentation and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Chief. Council Member Smith. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. We always appreciate the fire department. It always comes up when you give this, you know, the, the vacant structure fires and, and I just want to reinforce the city manager. You know, we, we put that extra money in the blighted communities and, and the sooner we can get out and purchase those and, and destroy them and <laughs> make it safer for the firemen and the community, you know, it'd be appreciated. So that's my comment. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Councilmember Smith. Councilmember Gonzalez. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chief, for the work that you're doing and uh, that of all your department. We know that you're, y'all are very busy and we appreciate you every day. Um, I want to, uh, follow up with that vacant structure fire. Um, this image actually is uh, a property in War II. Um, the property you referenced in, on Baker Street is in War II. Just two blocks up, there's another burnt out uh, commercial property. And just three blocks further up, uh, there's another um, property that is burnt out. Um, and so this is a huge issue. Um, I, I appreciate the door hangers. I'm, I'm curious what other uh, communities are doing uh, to respond to these um, vacant structure fires. Um, I had made a referral two years ago now uh, to staff to send to p and department to consider a vacant um, structure ordinance that would require these uh, building owners to have some sort of fire detection, uh, maybe fire suppression uh, mechanism on the building and also um, some security alarms. But as, as you pointed out, this is not only a, a, a danger to the property, but also surrounding surrounding properties and a real a real um, public safety issue. So, I'm going to ask you that question, not necessarily for a response today, uh, but if you can uh, get back to the council with some um, ideas of what other uh, cities are doing in response to these uh, vacant structure fires, we need to get a handle on this. And uh, I, I appreciate your proactivity on on the door hangers as well. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Gonzalez, uh, through the mayor. I, I know that one of the things that uh, other departments are doing, uh, or cities rather, are uh, rather than put up OSB type plywood over the doors and windows, are putting up some kind of a, a clear um, uh, board, if you will, um, plastic, so that people can see the activities going on inside of that structure, which uh, would compel people to call. Uh, the authorities, uh, the fire department, code enforcement, police department, um, but uh, the door hangers were something that we we researched and we couldn't find other departments doing that. And I thought, man, this could not be a one-off. But uh, I'll definitely reach out to some fire department partners and see if I can find out uh, what others are doing. Appreciate that. And thank you for being creative. Thank you, Councilmember Gonzalez. Councilmember Provier. Thank you, Mayor. Hey, John, I missed part of your presentation, but I just want to touch real quick on a couple of things. Uh, arson, how are you there? Are you up to staff or are you still highly impacted? Or uh, I know you had a couple guys shot at or some, you know, some sort of critical incident kind of happened, and I just want to make sure your team's okay with that too. Yeah, we're, uh, we're definitely uh, constantly <laughs> evaluating our staffing levels. Um, you know, 
in a, in a perfect world, Councilmember Parlier, we, we would have uh, a dozen, but it's, it's not a perfect world, and we're definitely fighting for uh, resources uh, you know, throughout all the city departments, and we definitely want to play our part in ensuring that all departments are uh, represented and staffed uh, well. So, uh, you know, I, I definitely uh, think that uh, it's, it's a different community nowadays. You know, we had a firefighter who was shot, uh, not in this community, but another uh, responding to a dumpster fire, I believe, uh, up he was, north. He was killed. Wasn't yes. He? Yeah. Yes. So uh, def definitely a different community um, or different uh, day and age, rather. And uh, we definitely want to, to ensure that uh, everybody is safe and, and we'll work with our law enforcement partners and, and travel with law enforcement uh, if we need uh, extra resources. And, and I know that uh, Chief Terry has our back and would respond uh, their officers with ours if need be. Now, as far as your fire stations, the city's grown a lot, uh, a lot in land mass. Uh, I'm hearing rumbles that a lot of stations are impacted now. Do we need to start looking at, you know, different areas of the city, potential put a, a station or two in the distant future, or near future, I should say? Uh, Council Member Parlier through the mayor, uh, we've actually been in talks with the city manager and, and we're definitely uh, aware of the growth that's happening throughout our community. In fact, the deputy chiefs and myself uh, traveled to uh, Northwest, I'm sorry, Northeast Bakersfield and, and watched uh, and looked at a lot of the growth out in that area. I think there's still some time before uh, it's fully grown out to, to uh, justify another station. But uh, yeah, we're definitely looking at, at the different areas where we have a way to track response times and extended response times so that we can determine where those stations need to be. Um, but we have been in conversations with the city manager. Okay, good. Uh, you know, I'd like to make a referral to Safe Neighborhoods just to drill down on these two topics a little bit, just on arson investigators and their staffing and, um, and future stations, fire stations. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Parlier. Councilmember Smith. Great, did you press it again? Okay, Council Member Freeman. Commissioner, and thank you, Chief. Good presentation. Um, I'm always impressed with how professional our Bakersfield <laughs> Fire Department is compared to so many others I've seen. So <laughs> you guys are doing a great job. And I think the public um, feels that way too, by the way, I feedback. Thank you. Uh, I have a little bit different request. I guess it's more the city manager because I think this was your agenda item. Um, our district attorney was unable to make it tonight, and I thought that would have been great to pair that with our chiefs talking about law enforcement together and say, so I'm just wondering if we can, and also everybody's been up here for five hours and is very tired, and I want them to pay attention to the presentations rather than just getting them over with. Um, I wonder if we, can we defer the chief to a future meeting? Is that possible when we could pair it with the district attorney and? So we hear about crime altogether. Thank you, Council Member Freeman, and <clears throat> again, uh, Mayor and Council, uh, we could defer um, uh, to a, another date. I, I would reflect that uh, the district attorney is likely to join also our homeless ad hoc committee, not at the uh, March meeting, but at our Feb, or excuse me, our April meeting, uh, in complement to the staff that will be presenting on that topic there, but. We could defer the rest of this presentation to another meeting when the well, district attorney can be As here. a council member, I really like to hear from her too. <laughs> and I'm not on that committee. So I, whenever, it's great when all seven people can really hear everything. Uh, I wish more people would come down from the community on, you know, uh, I ask them to, to, it's better to speak to seven people than to one or two. It just is. So. If that can be done, and if we can't get uh, District Attorney Zimmer here for a while, then bring the chief on, and we'll be glad to have. I just, I just really like uh, to hear her as well, and I thought pairing them would be a good idea, like you originally had planned tonight. Yeah, I, I think it's a reasonable uh, consideration. Uh, I think if it's the will of the, the council body to make a motion to continue this report to another meeting, we could do that. The one caveat I would just suggest is one of our updates is about our staffing efforts. And so we'd like to bring this back at one of our next couple meetings to stay ahead of some um, budget did time you need, did, conversations. Were you looking for a decision tonight on s s 
on no. staff? No, no, no. Oh, There's okay. no decision tonight. I just, we actually, we definitely want to give the staffing update in the next month or so okay. ahead yeah. of the budget, but we could defer this to an, another meeting in the near future. Well, if, if you have to do that and we can't get uh, Ms. Zimmer here at the same time, then let's be sure to get the chief here so we can make that decision. I just thought it'd be nice that we originally planted to have them both together. So, do I need to make a motion for that? Oh, I just yeah. thought that asking permission. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh. uh, let me just clarify this. Uh, Council Member Perlia, you had your name up there. Did you change your mind? Or well, I referred there? this item initially, and uh, I agree with my colleagues that they want to, you know, do this another time. And if there's going to be more information, the DA is going to be available, then why not? Thank you. And then Council Member Gray, and, do you if wish that's to a comment? motion, I, I think it is. Well, I would, I would agree with my colleague, yeah. um, Mr. Freeman, because I believe that we do ha have this in hand. It would give us a chance to look it over and be able to ask some good questions and we're not put on the spot at the last minute trying to, because this is really, th this is my wheelhouse, what I believe is most important for our community. And I'd like to have some time to, you know, mull it over and I really would love to hear from the DA. So if, if, if I okay. would agree. You have a motion. Councilmember Arias. <laughs> Please don't be upset with me, Mayor. Um, just real quick, uh, a question that I would love to have more information at the next time we get an opportunity to discuss is, do we have a list of all of those properties um, that have caught on fire several times? I know a, a number in my community specifically, um, but I would like for us to take a look at that list um, figure out where there are hotspots throughout the community and figure out if there's an opportunity to work with the Blighted Properties program that we've, we're have getting ready to develop so that we are uh, putting our dollars to best use. Thanks. Thank you, Councilmember Arias. You have a motion. Please cast your votes. Motion is unanimously approved. Thank you. And now next item, please. Council and Mayor statements. Councilmember Gonzalez. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make it quick. Um, we just talked about a, a burned out building at 611 Baker Street. We've been in the process, colleagues, of demolishing uh, this building, but it has taken uh, a very long time, longer than I had hoped, and many of the residents and property owners around the area um, have hoped. And so I'd like to ask tonight and make a referral that we include the building demolition process as part of our um, development of our substandard housing toolkit and uh, respond to that process and identify areas where we, we can expedite this process because it is, it is a public nuisance, it's a public safety issue, and we just need to get on it. Thanks. Thank you, Councilmember Gonzalez. Councilmember Gray. And I'll make this quick too, but for the record, um, I am very pleased to announce that the city of Bakersfield, we've worked with Chief Terry. Um, I've been working with Mike Maggard on the Board of Supervisors to um, come up with some, uh, um, I guess, those bulletproof vests that are out of warranty that we can't use. Um, to get those sent over to Ukraine to help the humanitarian effort over there. So I did hear from our supervisor um, today, and the National Guard is willing to ship those vests for us. So as far as I know, we might have close to 100, and then the chief was saying he's got some helmets. And so um, I'm excited about that. The B city of Bakersfield, I believe, is the most generous city in the entire state of California. And um, people are stepping up to help this humanitarian effort, these refugees that are fleeing by the millions. And I found out today that uh, Pastor Wendell Vinson, who um, is, in, I guess, founded really kind of City Serve, right, right Mayor? Uh, he and a team are actually in Poland right now as we sit. And um, they are um, taking care of people there at the, the border. And the request from the Polish people to help the refugees was a million meals. Sounds like a huge thing. 
And so when they looked into this, they found out $750,000 it was going to take just to ship the million meals. Well, when FedEx found out why they, were, why they were wanting to ship these meals, FedEx is doing the shipping for free. So that is just the kind of help that we need. So I wanted to just for the public to know that what is happening locally here, that we are involved in helping mankind and reaching out. And um, the, uh, hmm? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Bruce, you know, is, is hearing right now. He's struggling with. But, yeah. So, anyway, um, I'm just giving the, uh, the uh, and the supervisors gave this uh, out yesterday, too. If you would like to be able to help um, the humanitarian effort uh, locally, you can donate to cityservenetwork.com. And um, you can go ahead and make a financial donation there. And that money is going directly to, there's no administrative costs, all that stuff. It, it's dollars that are going directly to helping these people. So again, I'm proud of our city. I'm proud of our county that we can come together, work together on this, and uh, save some lives. So anyway, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember Gray. Councilmember Freeman. Um, well, thank you, Councilmember Gray. Mm. Um, have, is it, most of you know I have a son trapped in a bunker in the Ukraine as we speak. And um, so uh, I'm getting calls from everyone, some quite substantial people, groups, um, friends, everyone asking, who do I donate to? And up till now, I was saying, you know, I've called my contacts who are, who are calling and talking with friends in Kharkiv as every day. And they say, hold off, we're not sure. We're, you know, we don't know who's reliable and who we can get, who can, <laughs> you know, who doesn't have all the overhead and, and who's organized to get it. So this is um, really great news and I appreciate what you're doing. Um, just a uh, <laughs> little FYI, my son, um, he, we do WhatsApp every day up until two days ago. And he's been in a bunker, the bombs letting both sides uh, dodging tanks and Russians when he runs out. They knocked, you know, they're running out of food and water and they knocked out the power plant and the, um, and the water yesterday. So now they're in the dark. And he says, battery's low, so now we don't hear from him. Now we don't know what's going on. Now he can't even call. And we're trying to get information. You can't really get out of Kharkiv. If you know where that is, that's the worst place on earth to be. That's the Far Eastern, 30 minutes from Russian border where the most bombardment. So um, there's no way to get 1,000 or 2,000 miles over to Poland yet. But uh, these people are suffering, and uh, you just can't imagine uh, what it's like to get a WhatsApp on, you know, we're in the dark now, we have no water. And we can't go up because there's Russian soldiers running all around. But... Um, I think the response of American people is just fantastic, and I'm getting all sorts of calls. And this city served our, maybe you could email, I want to know exactly who to tell everybody to get the money to, because it's great to have a, one organization you can trust that's mobilizing. They can only get, you can't get inside of Ukraine. Uh, no, no, uh, you man bear turn supplies are getting in. It's just right on the edge in Poland. Uh, because uh, <laughs> the Russians will bomb any humanitarian stuff coming in. You know, this is a siege. This, this is meant to <laughs> wipe out as many people as possible. But uh, they're, uh, you know, what is it? One and a half? When one and a half, two million people have already fled, they're the ones in the far west that could get over the border. The Far East people, they're, they're in trouble. So uh, this is simply great. And uh, we all got to pray for them every night. Thanks. Thank you, Councilmember Freeman. You know, it's amazing that uh, CityServe actually was founded here. It's gone all over the United States and now international. Councilmember Gray. You, you ended that perfectly, Bruce. The best thing that we can do is to pray. I would implore 
everyone to pray. Thank you. Thank you. Colleagues, are there any other requests to speak? Don't see any, so we are adjourned at 842.